<laughs> so Nam Aloha everyone. Welcome to the live stream and write down your name and where you're logging in from if you uh, wish. And uh, the full moon is coming up tomorrow. So let's just get the chart up here. Right there. And uh, let me see here. Right. So if you're feeling intense, emotional, exhausted, then you're right on track with the full moon. This is a doozy, this one, in Capricorn. Um, I want to make sure that it's uh, big enough. I noticed when I we rewatched the videos, the image wasn't big enough. I think that's going to be better, just so everybody can see it. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this full moon. Oh, did I not do that? In Capricorn, there we go. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So it's a full moon in Capricorn, and it's in the shadow of psychosis and the gift of inspiration. But let's talk about the Capricorn archetype before we uh, dive into the signs. <clears throat> so a tough cycle is ending. <laughs> Yay. And you may have been uh, feeling this yourself the last couple weeks. It's been like slogging up a hill, right? With the boulder. It's like, you know what it's like? It's like, um, you know, if your battery ever got, uh, dies and you're pushing a car, you're helping somebody push a car, it's like that. That kind of thing. Push, 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 push. Well, the full moon in Capricorn, that tough cycle is ending, and then the car gains momentum, right? So the energy in our life gains momentum, and then uh, uh, things start to go a little bit more smoothly, right? So um, the tough cycle is about making decisions. Should I stay or should I go? Face And then facing reality with the full moon in Capricorn. So something that you've been trying to manifest or, or work on could be a relationship or manifesting more money or manifesting a career, job, something, right, that you've been working really hard on in this cycle and it seems like you just get nowhere, like you're just spinning your wheels. Well, this is Capricorn is serious, right? And it's like, okay, am I going to continue this path and working on this or am I going to? Am I going to exit, right? So what's going to help you is um, your emotions because your emotions are going to be so intense, right? They're intensifying now. The, the full moon's tomorrow. So you, you probably started feeling the, more, the intensity on the weekend, right? And your emotions are going to show you very clearly, yes, I want this. I'm, I'm willing to work hard, hard for this, right? Or no. It's like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to me. I'm just going to say goodbye and go somewhere else. So really your emotions are guiding you here. And your emotions, um, what do I want to say about that? Your, emo your emotions are the guide, right? They're going to show you where the emotional fulfillment is for you. That's what I'm trying to say. Because the opposite side of Capricorn is cancer. And that's the... Uh, the uh, emotions. So um, what else? We want to bring back into balance too. The full moon's going to show you where you've been out of balance in your life. And so it's all about this correction, right? The full moon's going to show you very, very clearly in your life where you need a correction. It's going to be around relationships and money, right? Those two big ones because the Venus is involved. And then the practical earth steps. It's like, yes, I have this thing um, that I want to manifest in my life for emotional fulfillment, but now it's time to make the steps, right, on the earth plane towards your dreams. So making, the, making a plan, right? That's what uh, Capricorn is. And then you get up every day and you, may, you, can't, you know, one step at a time. So these are the questions to ask yourself now. It's like, you know, and your emotions are going to be showing you yes or no very, very clearly, you know. Um, 
Okay, so let's get into the... the uh, oh, I want to remind people that my one and a half hour recorded readings, I'm going to have those for 50% off for the month of July. And these are very important. You, need, you can't get this information just anywhere, right? It's what your body needs. This is all about the future. Human design is all about the future, right? The world's going to catch up with, with uh, this. What does your body, your vehicle need to eat that's unique to you? Remember my last video, it's all about embracing your uniqueness, not going into the shadow of medio mediocrity, one size fits all. We're not, you know, we're heading into uni uh, unity consciousness, but it's uh, um, unity and diversity, unity and diversity. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. But it's true, we have to individuate first. We have to become our unique self first, and then we enter into this unity consciousness. So this fast tracks, because the conditioning that we experience, it happens right when we come out of the womb. Before, when we're in the womb, we're receiving these, this conditioning field. It's a frequency, and it's pulling you away from your authenticity. So when you do start to do your inner work and spiritual work as an adult, that's why we're faced, we're confronted with this fear. It's the conditioning field that we entered into, right, when we incarnated on this planet. So this fast tracks, it goes right to the cellular, right? It goes right to the cellular. And when I started embracing this, I really started embracing my... Um, um, you know, my protocol, I guess I would call it, right? That's right for me and my vehicle. I noticed like a lot of this, my childhood stuff came up and I let that go. Started to not be experiencing anxiety and depression like I did. Things just started flowing a little bit more easily. So this can really help you. And it's unique to you and unique to your chart, right? So the right foods that you need, the right environment, how your brain works, what you're supposed to see. We're not all supposed to see the same things out in the world and how to make your decisions based on your aura type, and then a, a Kundalini Yoga meditation to drop the mask, to break the mask, break that false self, okay? So that's for the month of July. You just type in FRIEND, capital, on all caps, okay? Um, so let's go into the shadow here. Um, so it's the 61. You can see here there's the moon, 61.1. And it's the shadow of psychosis. It's the gift of inspiration. And this is about the mind, the obsessive mind. So first, we'll just talk about the channels, right? Because we want to address that. So the throat and the ajna are uh, defined. That means they're colored in. Those gates hook up. So we already talked about this 4323. I have a video on this if you want to watch that. And so the north node is where life wants us to go. This is our evolution, and it's all about simplicity. That's the gift, is simplicity. And so Capricorn, you know, is about um, the Capricorn full moon is about what you're letting go of, what you're cutting away. That's what Capricorn says. It's like, what do you need? What, what are the basics? No excess, right? So that fits perfectly with this North Node in Taurus in the 23. Slicing off, that's the old term uh, from the I Ching, right? The 23, slicing off, slicing away the excess. What's excess in my life so that I can streamline? What's important to me? What do I value, right? And then letting go of this deafness, which is about listening to a worm tongue. That's the ego, right? From uh, I use this figure from Lord of the Rings. So not listening to that, right? The becoming deaf to him. You want to become deaf to him, right? Um, so you got that. And this is the channel of insight. So it gives you great insights into your life, right? So it's breakthroughs right? Breakthroughs. And breakthroughs don't happen without a breakdown. And that's the emotional body work, right? The emotions are so important now. I got uh, some messages this week from people freaking out. And it's like, it simplify, 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 simplify. That's your mantra. Okay? Simplify because the, the mind is going crazy, right? This upset, the obsession, this is the shadow. It's going to show us how crazy our mind is, how insane our mind is. That's what the shadow is about. You simplify, 
right? Don't, don't be listening to the mind and going with the mind back and forth. It's like you're in the, on top of the ocean and you're like being bashed around by waves. You want to be anchored in, right? Like your anchor's got to go right down to the bottom of the ocean. That's where you want to be. That's your, your true self, right? This awareness that I'm talking about, right? It's about transcending the mind. That's what this uh, shadow pattern, this full moon is about, transcending the mind to be in the state of awareness, expanded awareness beyond the mind, beyond the ego, right? And that's that anchoring in down to the bottom of the ocean. So when those waves come, because they will, because that's what life is, life's just a wave, challenges will come, emotions will come, right? You're going to be anchored in and then you're not going to get be swayed around, right? That's what it's like. And the emotions don't overwhelm you, right? And you don't get trapped in the mind. And when you're trapped in the mind, that's who you're listening to, right? So you want to watch that video that one on, that I did on Saturn, which is about emotional triggering, right? Because that's when we get locked in the waves and we're back and forth and we're looking to him our ego to guide us out and it's not going to guide us out he's going to take us into more turmoil and chaos you know um okay so that's oh and the other channel here is the 1762 that's defined and this is all about um what's the 1762 about it's about not getting lost in the details 1762 and what you see right not getting lost in the details able to see the bigger picture this full moon right so capricorn it's like it's the it's the elevated view right capricorn rules the 10th house that's the top of the chart right you're able to see like this is what i this is what i want in my life going into the future and not getting locked into the mundane details of you know, whatever fires you you uh, have to put out. And, you know, the powers that be are throwing lots of lots of little fires around to keep us distracted. Well, I just have to survive in this and inflation and, and this and this. And this is happening and this is happening in the world. It's like this full moon is going to show you, elevate you up, right? You need to, you need to um, make that space and time for yourself right to really feel and go within and it's like what do i want for my life right and so you this channel is great you're not going to get lost in the little details and all the and on all the fires that life brings right and then the great insights so you can get really clear right making a plan full moon capricorn making a plan slicing away what's unnecessary, what you don't want, you uh, don't want or need, you know? Uh, and this is the time to manifest, like we can manifest during this time, but we have to get clear on what we want to manifest because there's so, like I said, there's so many distractions out in the world, you know? Okay. Okay, so let's, uh, so we did those two. Um, and Saturn is still in that, shadow pattern of reaction right so that's the emotional triggering and we have to learn like i can't stress that enough to people we have to learn how to manage our emotions during this time because it's, it's just going to get more and more intense you know and if you're not making your choices should i stay or go and you're waffling back and forth this is when the divine comes in and it's like uh, she's not listening we've been sending her this intuitive message for like you know, a year now, she's not listening, we have to intervene, right? And then some crisis will happen in your life, you'll attract some crisis to get you on the right path, you know, your destiny path. <laughs> There's no dragging your feet anymore, you know, but your emotions are going to show you, they'll show you clearly what, where you need to go, or what you need to let go of, right? So, um, this is the shadow pattern of psychosis. Um, what did I want to talk about? Um, I just want to talk about relationships, actually, because Capricorn is masculine, and then the opposite side is Cancer. So it's the masculine and feminine energy. And so we're coming into unity consciousness. 
So this is the unity of the masculine and the feminine. So the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And I was talking to a friend yesterday and she has several friends that called her all in one day, like within two days, all of them talking about how unhappy they were in their, rela in their present relationships, like married or long-term relationships, how she couldn't stand her marriage anymore and blaming her partner and he's this way and he's that way, but refusing to leave. So anyway, my friend was asking me some advice, like what should I, what could I tell my friends? So I was asking her more questions, right? To get more, some, get more information about their situation. So they're all unhappy, right? They've been happy for a while. And then they're saying, um, and then I said, well, why don't they leave? What's, what excuse are they leave, giving you? It's all about money. It's all about money. Well, I'll lose money. I'll lose the house. His health isn't very good, so he's going to die probably in a couple of years, and then I'll get the house. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then other things, like I, I, I don't know how I would support myself. Right? All about money. I'm clinging to money, and that's why I'm in this, re in this relationship that I'm so unhappy in right? and angry about. So then I asked her another bullseye question, which is like, God always gives us the help. I talked about this before. You always get the life raft thrown at you. You always get the, even if you think you're in a dark room, God, the divine will always show you there's a little bit of light over here, right? And there's a, a window. There's an opportunity there to get out. So I asked her, so how, did, it, did anybody show up in their life? And she's like, oh, that's interesting you say that. Yeah, about six months ago, this person showed up, <laughs> right? And that her friend really likes them, right? Um, and she said, in, 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 uh, she sent a picture, and it's like the, they were married already. They looked so compatible. And I said, yeah, that's the opportunity, right? That's, that's the opportunity. But it's like, oh, he doesn't have money, <laughs> right? He doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. Where the excuse is not to go for your your um, your happiness. So this is what this full moon in Capricorn is is about. Is like to go for your what makes you happy. Like don't be clinging to money. Money's not going to give you what you really really want. Not emotional fulfillment. And like waiting and postponing. Like people have gotten tricked before, right? That person that's. It's got a cough and you think they're going to die or <laughs> go away. <laughs> they end up outliving you. You know what I mean? That's the karma. So I like to look at the tarot. You know, I love the tarot. This is the four of cups and this is all about missed opportunities, right? So this is where the mind can go and focused on the, like my friend's f friends, right? These, these cups, these empty cups and the life's not going anywhere and Meanwhile, there's somebody offering her a cup and she can't even look at it, right? That's the missed opportunities. And then my friend actually, and, I, and then I said, well, they're asking you this, so that means that you probably have an experience, a similar experience. And sure enough, she did, right? She was in a, in a non-happy marriage and she was going on her spiritual journey. And then her partner husband didn't want anything to do with that he was full-on materialist and it was all about image and not to make him wrong but it was just showing her that they're they were incompatible and she was staying for the money too right money and, and stability and security and all that and she was actually thinking of killing herself she was that unhappy she was making plans to do that and then boom her future husband shows up in her life completely different right spiritual but she went for it she took that cup and she went for it and um she's happy happy as a clam the two of them right so um what i want to say is um with these missed op opportunities especially in our relationships now because we're playing musical chairs the universe is playing musical chairs people are leaving and going going right towards their happiness and emotional fulfillment now. I've seen it in my work too with uh, people that I work with. Is that in some traditions they say when we die, we get to see two movies. So one movie, what we see is our life, how we lived our life, right? That passes through our eyes. And then the second movie we watch is what we could have, the life we could have lived, 
right? And that's the happiness and the joy and the emotional fulfillment and everything you ever wanted, right? That's doing your purpose, doing your destiny, following your heart and intuition. That's the other movie, right? So sometimes, I mean, I wish that we could just see the, the highlight reel. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like we could see the trailer before we got involved with uh, a person. It's like, okay, I want to see the third, I want to see the minute, three minute trailer of this, of what's going to happen with this person. But we don't get that. That's not the game on planet Earth. We've got to make that leap of faith and we've got to trust. We have to trust our hearts, right? So that's what this full moon is telling us. It's now to trust our hearts, not our minds, right? And this is this the, um, shadow of psychosis is about the obsessive mind, right? That's what it is. So psychosis, we think of, you know, the tradition because we live in an upside down world. The shadow of psychosis is disconnected from reality, right? But really, the shadow of psychosis is, yes, it's disconnected from reality. And reality is far greater than this 3D realm, right? Reality is other realms of existence. It's the invisible world. It's the divine world, right? And then we got Worm Tongue telling us, this, this is the obsessive, obsessive mind, because he's part of this shadow pattern, right, ego. He's telling you what to see, what you see. Oh, this is the world. This is the way he's telling you what the world is. You know, it's only this. It's only material. And, and, and uh, this is how you, you uh, sur uh, survive, because ego is all about survival in this world. You have to do this and do this and do this and follow these rules. And he's giving you a very limited point of view of the world, right? It's very, very limited. We're much more vast, right? So this time that we're in, Entering into the Aquarian age, we, we, uh, we have to learn to transcend the mind. Remember, we're evolving from this mental awareness system and moving into a solar plexus awareness system. And this is, leads to spirit awareness. This is a self-sensory system that the Kundalini Yoga, meditate, uh, Kundalini Yoga um, tradition talks about, self-sensory. And this is the solar plexus mutation, right? that I have a whole webinar on. on. Um, this is what we're entering. So we got to get used to living in the states, these states, right, of awareness when we're not in our mind. And I'm sure you've had that experience yourself where the mind just goes silent. I love it. I totally thrive in that, in that space. It's like the mind is just quiet. You've transcended the mind. Right, so we have to just get used to living in these spaces for the Aquarian age. Um, so the psychosis is really the disconnected from the invisible divine world, only in touch with the material world. Not to say the material world isn't valid; it's just as valid. But there's there's greater realms of existence too, right? But the shadow of psychosis keeps us there, and when it keeps us there. Then we're up here. This is the this is the the top, right? The top of the chart. That's the the mental, right? This is the ajna, your personal mind. But this is the mental, the mental plane, right here. The mental body, the head center, the crown chakra. I would call it too, and uh, as a yogi. So um, what you have to when you're in that limited state, then you're depending on your mind to make all your decisions, right? And then, of course, you're here with uh, worm tongue, taking you back and forth. This is the obsession. So this obsession is the preoccupation with a thought or belief that you just like, it's a loop in your head. You wake up at night with that loop, 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 loop in your head. These are the programs that we have to start letting go of, right? Um, of, uh, well, how will you survive? How will you pay your bills? What will happen to you, right? It's all about what's these horror stories that are going to happen in the future to you. Or what if this? Well, what if you did this and this happened? Or what if you did that and that didn't happen, right? So it's got you back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just uh, playing you like a fiddle, right? Um, 
And it's all based on these emotional triggers that start releasing, right? The fear, because we're coming more into our authenticity. So we have to be confronted with our deepest, deepest fears. And if we don't address them inside, they're going to be projected. They'll, they'll turn up out in the world somehow, you know, where we have to address it right there, right? Because we have to transcend all of the, all of these fears. So if you're do if that's happening in your life, oh my God, I'm, manifesting my worst fears the thing that i've been afraid of all my life and running away from here it is it's right in my face if it's in your face then that means you're ready to transcend it that's how you have to look at it right there's a way through every block um and um so yeah we have to learn to live in this space of transcending the mind and so there's lots of meditations, right? I did that dilute the ego meditation. I'm going to edit it and then put it on my website so it'll be short and sweet, right? And that's a great one to practice when your mind starts getting obsessive. And this is a shadow pattern. Remember, there's a gift to every shadow. And what's up here is inspiration. That's the higher frequency of the shadow of psychosis, so it keeps you in an obsessive mind. So whatever you've been obsessing about, right? Whatever you've been obsessing about, and we'll, we'll look at the, um, the signs and we'll give you some hints on where that's taking place for you, right? But it's time to, um, to um, transcend that. So let's just talk about, so the shadow keeps you in a, an obsession, keeps you in the, keeps you locked in the mind, right? And it's also about knowledge, knowledge versus wisdom. So this is the needing to know. That's the obsession too. I need to know. I need, I need mental certainty. If I do this, I need a guarantee that this is going to happen, right? So let's go back to the relationship stuff, right? You know, the, the, my friend's friend, Right. With uh, the new person on the scene, say, right. And it's like, oh, I've got this, this, these feelings for this person in my, in my mind is like obsessing about it. Well, what if, you know, worm tongue is saying, well, they'll probably not feel the same way as you, or, you know, you're going to look like a fool if you do this or you do that. That's all the fear because worm tongue wants you, you know, we're heading into unity consciousness but worm tongue does not want that. The ego is all about separation. It's all about keeping people separate that are supposed to be together. Keep them separate. Keep us separate from our own divinity, right? With our own soul. Keeping us separate from creation, right? So whatever worm tongue is telling you, it's about putting a wedge in between, between you and the other person. So the energetics of this, okay, is if you have feelings for someone and it won't go away, doesn't go away, so it's not some kind of fantasy, or thoughts of that person that just won't go away, 10 times out of 10, the other person's feeling the same way, right? So this is the soul, because the soul is showing you through your heart, right? Through your, the frequency of your heart, where you're drawn to, where your intuition is telling you loud and clear now, right? It's like, go, go towards your destiny. It's like, don't be afraid and don't listen to worm tongue, right? Who wants you divided? Doesn't want you in your power whatsoever. And to trust. The thing that I'm saying with women, right? Because we're having this unity consciousness of the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming together that the, you know, and in in, I talked about this before, the feminine wants security. She wants to feel secure with the masculine. And that means that knowing without a doubt the masculine's not going to bolt at the first sign of trouble or challenge, right? The commitment is really important. And then the masculine wants the feminine, uh, you know, a woman that he can trust, right? The feminine that he can trust, someone that he can trust that's not going to betray him, right? That's going to inspire, inspire him. This is the unity. Consciousness is coming together. So women that say, well, I'm getting my security through the money because that man has money. Oh, I don't really, I'm not really into him. I'm into his money, 
right? And thinking that's security, that's falling away. We're going to see this, the whole economy money system that's in place right now, it's built in fear. And that means it's not authentic and true. It's going to start to dissolve. So you've got to look at what your true security is, right? And it's in, it's in the soul, right? It's in your soul. So um, in the unknown, right? In the unknown, where was I going with that? With, uh, oh, that the divine feminine, when, the, when, the divine, when you're in your divine feminine, like fully in it, that means receptive, right? That means receptive. The divine masculine will move mountains for the divine feminine. We'll move mountains. We'll do anything for the divine feminine, right? Because the, because the correct energetic is that the masculine, the divine masculine serves the divine feminine. Not, it's, it's not like a matriarchy. It's flipping from patriarchy to matriarchy. I'm talking about energetics, right? And you talk to any, talk to any male in his divine masculine who's doing his passion, who's doing his purpose, and ask him, and if he's honest, why are you doing this? It's always, always about a woman. It's always about the feminine because the feminine motivates the divine masculine. So just keep that in mind because worm tongue is going to tell you lies. Well, he doesn't have this and he doesn't have that. If he's got his divine masculine, he's got everything everything and if she has her divine feminine she has everything okay so now we both we you know each one of us has both right divine feminine divine masculine within us but one is more um stronger right one force is more stronger than the other so just keep that in mind right if you're going through an experience of musical chairs right now just trust tr trust your heart trust your intuition don't trust the mind, not the mind, not, not now. It's going to get more and more crazy as we enter into the Aquarian age. Um, okay. Is there anything left to say on that? Psychosis. Oh, the knowledge and the wisdom. <laughs> got sidetracked. That's what a live stream is. Getting sidetracked. Um, so knowledge versus system. So this is I need to know. That's what I what my last thought was before I took that left turn. Um, I need to know, right? I need guarantees. I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. That's the obsession. I need to know. I need to know. And this is coming from go to the emotions right? Simplify it. It's like, what's going on with me emotionally? My mind is like spinny right now. It's going crazy. That's when it's like, okay, what's going on in my emotions? Don't get locked up in there in the top of the ocean. Go to the bottom of the ocean, right? And it's like, oh, I'm feeling fear. That's what's triggering the thoughts. That's why the mind is going crazy because it's reacting to your emotions, right? So that's the fear, so that we have to transmute that. So it's just about feeling it. It's about allowing it and just feeling it. And then it will move. It moves through you, and then the mind starts to calm down. And then your awareness, right? Your awareness starts to expand, right? When you let go of that fear and you transmute those emotions, then you... You're, you're expanding. This is how you expand through the emotional body. And then the mind and the ego get smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's about remembering. I feel like the spiritual journey is, is we already know everything. Do you know what I mean? Like it's already inside of us. We just have to remember it. So it's about remembering, oh, I'm not this mind, right? No, I'm not this ego. I'm greater than this. So your awareness right? Your emotions are really going to help you. Like, don't look at them as a burden uh, in these times. Look at them as an ally. And then your strategy, right? Whatever your human design type is, and that will help you make your decisions too. But it's not about going in up here anymore. No. No, we can't use our mind anymore. It's not equipped, and the mind's all about the past anyway. So if you're in the obsession, this is all about the past, 
Well, you got hurt last time. This, this thing happened to you last time right and it's just that's what mo we do we just project our past onto the future right and that, that's the mind when we're when we're operating from our mind we're really in the past and it's gone and the past is gone we have to let go of the past and i feel like that's part of what the full moon and capricorn is showing us too it's like let's we need to let go of the past and these old ways of doing things and we need to like enter into the portal right fully present it's all about being present <sighs> so no knowledge and wisdom am i ever going to address this okay knowledge and wisdom so knowledge is the needing to know so knowledge is just gathering facts like anybody a donkey can gather knowledge put a bunch of books on the back of a donkey's back he's knowledgeable right he's got the knowledge wisdom is something completely different this is lived knowledge, right? It's not just reciting something that you read in a book or you heard on mainstream news. It's taking that knowledge and then turning it through your life experience into wisdom. So not everybody who's knowledgeable is wise. You know, they don't always go together. So wisdom is completely different and it has nothing to do with the mind. It's your lived experience. That's what makes you wise. Right? What have you learned in your lifetime so far? That's yours. That's yours. That's what wisdom is. It's mine. Nobody can talk me out of my experience, you know? So uh, this is about inspiration too, right? Is using this, the, this wisdom. So inspiration is like being filled with spirit, right? Inspired, right? Um, so we have to empty ourselves of fear and we have to empty ourselves of the past and then this gift of inspiration. So a great mantra I love is that I use on myself uh, is I know that I don't know. I know that I don't know. I know that I don't know anything, right? And once you do that, you're emptying your mind. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I have no idea what's going to happen if I make this choice, but I'm trusting my heart and my intuition. I know that I don't know and the wisdom, right? Because you're empty, so the wisdom can come through. Wisdom is a frequency, it's a higher frequency, right? Wisdom, this is connected to the divine feminine too. Wisdom, it's part of the 48th um, gate. Okay, so let me look at some um, comments and then we'll dive right into the, the signs. Okay. Where's my comments? Do, 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 do. Comments. Comments, comments. There we go. Um, Satnam Jen and CA and uh, Shamai, Shaima. Adi Shakti, oh Capricorn, yeah, it's your moon time, Tammy, Satnam Tammy, and M. Baines from New Mexico, Amaris Satnam, Massachusetts, <laughs> spiritual designer says I'm cleaning out our home and simplifying, yeah, that's a good thing to do on a full moon in Capricorn too. Remember, this is not a good time to be drinking or taking drugs and things like that because we retain more water during the full moon. Oh, I love that. You're on day 28 of the 40-day Kundalini Yoga meditation. Is that the one for the ego? I had a dream last week of a giant wave coming towards me. I held my breath and dove under it and made it to shore. There's a great story that I don't know if I shared this one that I heard many, many years ago about the, there was a tsunami going to be coming to this town, right? This coastal town. Um, but they got the, they got the information kind of last, last minute on the radio. So there was like this an hour or something. So some people are bolting, bolting and they're, they're, um, 
tie, you know, locking their windows and their doors and which is crazy, right? Trying to prevent the tsunami from coming into their home. And there's one woman and they didn't survive all those people. They didn't survive at all. They got washed away. But there was one woman who survived and they were asking her like, what, well, what did you do? And she said, I, I just calmly went on the roof <laughs> of my house and then I just went with the wave. I didn't fight. I didn't fight it at all. I just like surrendered to the wave, right? And she survived. So that's the kind of the thing. It's like that's such a great metaphor for life right now. It's like just to surrender, right? And the full moon is all about surrendering. It's all about surrendering to the divine. Where is that wave taking you? Probably somewhere awesome, right? To not fight it. To not fight it. Okay, Massachusetts corruption exposed, Sutton on. Okay, Suzanne, Sutton on. Okay, uh, Adi Shakti, it was the dilute the ego. That's in my last video. No, my second last video. Okay. Yeah, and it's time to let go of the people that aren't aligned with you. Your emotions are going to tell you, like, there's no energy with these people anymore. And it's not making those people wrong. It's just like they're not aligned. Yeah. Projectors, yeah. It's not easy being a projector. It's not easy being any type, I don't think. Okay. Okay, so let's go into uh, the reading. Reading here. There we go. Just want to take my time. So if you were um, your sun sign, right? You want your sun sign, your ascendant, and your moon sign. In the order of importance is your rising sign, because that's how you present in the world. That represents you as the avatar, right? Your form. Um, that you want to look at the sign um, before you and the sign after you, right? So if you're a Taurus, then you want to look at Aries, and then you want to look at Gemini, right? So do that, because sometimes... It will be more applicable to you depending on how your house system, right? This is a general read, so it can't be like super specific and unique. It can't be unique for each person. But the one before or after, it's like, oh, that didn't really apply to me. We'll check the one before or after and that will apply to you. Yeah. Okay. Let me get my wheel out. Anyway, it's ride or die time, right, this week. People are going to be making their decisions. Okay. And we'll go to... Yeah. Let's get the ride first, because I want to be more focused. Collective.
I'll take that. I'll take that. So the car, the card, the tarot card is the magician. You can see that it's the magician. <clears throat> which is major arcana, so that's major energy for the collective. And this is about claiming your power, the collective, is to claim their power, that, and to know that they have everything inside them that they need to manifest. It's all about manifestation. Yeah. And the ego is saying revenge, revenge, the revenge card. So this is about the ego wanting to get back. That someone wants to blame someone. And mainstream media is totally buying into this, right? They want us divided. it. This is how you control humanity. Keep them all divided. Keep them all in their little boxes fighting amongst themselves, right? So this is what the ego is telling the collective. It's them, right? That's what he's telling her. It's them over there. You know, it's them over there. They're the problem. If they would just do this, if they would just agree with us, then everything would be fine, you know? And it's, um, it can be an obsession, right? Because it's obsessive, the obsessive mind wanting revenge, right? Needing to have revenge. Um, and, then, and then the choose love, right? So this is about the collective needs to start operating from their hearts. Stop chasing the dollar and start chasing God, right? Start chasing the divine, choosing love, right? The, go to the source. It's the golden goose story. You know the golden goose story with the goose that lays golden eggs? Why be running for the fighting over the egg? Oh, I want that egg. Oh, give me this egg. It's like get to the goose. The goose is the one that's producing the eggs. It's like the divine. The divine is creating all of this, right? That's where it all comes for, from. Like, why not go to the source? So it's about the collective needs to get into this um, frequency of love, and then they tap into their power of manifestation. That's what I see here, and in, in, in empowerment, too. And then this old cycle, is tough cycle, is ending. Because we're here to realize ourselves. And one of the things we have to realize is like that we do have power, right? That we, that we are masters. We're here to master our own lower self. That's what we're here to master. And to let go of this revenge thing. It's so old. Can't you smell the mothballs on it? It's ancient. The tribal, right? This tribal consciousness is leaving. The planet. The only thing left will be individual consciousness and collective consciousness. No tribal, like fighting amongst yourselves, right? Fighting that tribe. Your, my God's better than your God. That type of thing. Um, okay. So that's the collective. And let's go for mm, the overlays, yeah. And put your, um, when we get to your sign, if we get to your sign, rising sun or moon, and just put what it's in. Okay. Uh, overlays. And we'll start with Pisces. Let's we'll start with Pisces. So any Pisces uh, rising sun or moon? The anxious have been telling us that forever, haven't they? Because it's all in the heart. That's where all the action is. It's the heart. Because we have to leave that third chakra consciousness. This is where revenge is. Into the fourth chakra consciousness. And that's the heart, right? We have to be in our hearts. Right now. Okay. So Pisces. Okay, so Pisces, sun, moon, or rising for Pisces 
that's happening, this shadow pattern, this full moon's happening in your 11th house. So that's about your friendships, right? So some friends, maybe, you may be cutting out of your life, right? Some friends. Maybe they're cutting you out of their life to, to just get clear. Because you know what? We, we become the five people that we hang out with the most. We become those people. It's a, it's a real thing. It's a frequency. Are they aligned with you on your spiritual path, your friendships? Let's see what uh, the ego is telling Pisces first. I'll chat about that. Pisces, it's also about clinging on to your um, hopes and dreams that may be very limited, you know, and they need to change and to expand to look at that. But it's really telling you about, yeah. Okay. So you got one of the sutras, there's a way through every block. So you may be feeling blocked maybe with your hopes and dreams or with friends who are blocking you as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm seeing there's a way through every block with the friends. It's looking like you're hanging out with the wrong people. That's what I see. Because you got the card of restraint, which means to retreat. Right? You may be, you're Pisces. Pisces, one of the shadows of Pisces is they have no boundaries. It's hard for them to have boundaries. So they can take on the, they can be really influenced by their friends. You know, whether you ag agree to this or not, you'll notice this. If you're alone, you can get clear. That's what this card's saying, is to get clear, retreat, go within. Find out what you want, what your hopes and dreams are. Not your friends, especially if they're tofu people that I talked about in my last video. You know, that your hopes and dreams may be completely different. That's what the card's saying, and that there's a way through every block. And the way they're doing their life may not be right for you. It often isn't. This is us embracing our uniqueness, Pisces. You have to find your own way through, you know? That's correct for you. And it can be very different than your friends. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, we're on something for Pisces. So this is the four of uh, fire. It's two people break dancing. So this is uh, prosperity, it's contentment, it's celebration, right? So stability. With the, with uh, there's a way through every block. So you're the way through your block, right? Is um, is cutting out some friends. That's what I see. Cutting out some friends, retreating, going going in, inward, and then you're gonna find your four your four wands, right? This is like celebration, it's stability, it's prosperity. So the hopes and wishes, right? It's ha the 11th house also has to do with your um, wealth gained, right? Your prosperity. It's like your answers aren't with your friends. Stop going to your friends, stop calling them up for advice and go within. That's what that's saying. And then the four of fire is gonna be there. Right? And when you're in that energy of like, you know, I know my way through the block and I'm confident now, right? I trust my intuition. I trust my heart. 
and then you're going to like the last video, right? Then you, you'll be faced may or may not, but it sounds like you'll be faced with the judgment and the opinions of others because you're, you're taking a different route. Yeah. So yeah, uh, just look at your friendships. That's what I would suggest to Pisces with the shadow of psychosis. And maybe they may be expressing that shadow of psychosis, like the obsessive, well, you know, playing the the role of worm tongue Pisces, right? Because worm tongue is living in everybody, right? So worm tongue wants in you, in you know, worm tongue in your friend wants to talk to the worm tongue in you, and then they have this conversation, like back and forth. You want to step out of that, and sometimes we need to be out of other people's aura. This is what human design teaches. We can be so conditioned by people just being in their aura, you know, is to retreat. Okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to spend some alone time, right, with myself and really like listen and go within, right? Go within and, and go here into this, into this space and be silent and transcend the mind and the ego and like listen to your intuition and your heart. And then knowing that there's a way through the block, but it's not going to come through your friends. No, that's what I see. But good things are waiting for you if you go within and trust yourself. Uh, okay. That goes there. There we go. Okay. And let's go for Aries. Let's go for Aries. Mm -hmm. Aries, the ram. Tenth house. Yeah. Aries is going to be in the tenth house. So there can be some obsession about your soul purpose. You may have a father calling your attention. Uh. <laughs> okay. Let me get this card. So you got the control card. So that's totally a 10th house thing is control. So needing control or being controlled by somebody else. Some kind of <coughs> father figure in your life. So it could be an authority figure. Could even be like a landlord, a boss, a supervisor. Or you yourself could be a boss, supervisor, father, figure in someone else's life and trying to control. And control really comes from fear, right? It's the dynamic of control. And that obsession, right, of needing control, needing to control. And what are you really controlling, trying to control? Your emotions. That's what you're trying to control. Okay, and then you've got the, um, the Knight of Swords, the Knight of Air. You see that person with their snowsuit on in their car? This is cold, right? In the sword, the Knight of Air, the Knight of uh, Swords. So motivated, ambitious in your uh, career, very intellectual, right? But also disconnected from your... Uh, from your heart, right? With the Knight of Air. Knight of Air, Knight of Air, Knight of Swords can come in rushing in, not with, um, you know, not present, just like I'm, I'm, I want this and I'm just going for it. The, kind of like a whirlwind kind of energy and needing control, using your intellect to control. Um, Let's do, let's do the other card. The gift here. So trying to control your emotions too with your um, 
your intellect. Because this 61 shadow, right, it's all about the intellect. And maintaining control. Hmm. So it says be present. So be present. It's about your presence. So that's my sense is you're trying to control your emotions and what you're feeling because this is why people don't want to be present. Why don't people want to be in the now and present? Why, like, what's the big deal? It's so simple. Why can't we just be in the now? Well, because we, got, we have to feel. That's why we don't want to be in the now because as soon as you're present, those emotions are there and it's like you've been feeling that all along, but you've been trying to control it, right? Through using your intellect and being obsessed with work, right? In your career and being ambitious, running away from your emotions and what you're really, really feeling that are calling you, right? So the full moon in Capricorn is going to light that up, right? Because this isn't going to work anymore. This is not going to work and for anybody anymore, trying to control our emotions. So this is calling you to be present, just to be present in the, in the moment, right? In each and every moment and feel. That's all it is. It's just allowing a space for your emotions to come up and you just feel them, you know? Because trying to control them just postpones it. It just and this makes it more uncomfortable, right? Because with this thirty-six in Neptune that you can see there, right? The thirty-six in Neptune. Remember, I talked about that. That's coming off the solar plexus here, Aries. Right? This is turbulence. You want to go watch this video on my uh, channel about uh, turbulence. So this is the emotions. This is like the tsunami of emotions. The 40 days and 40 nights of flooding, that's happening inside each one of us. And you're not going to be able, nobody's going to be able to feel their emotions unless they're in the present, in the present moment, you know? And that's to be uh, here, right? And to also look at, uh, I love this, I wrote this quote down here, I'm happy because I have no future. Right? Yeah, we have to get out of that mind state. We're coming more and more into the present moment for the Aquarian age. I have no future. All I have is now, right, in this moment. So to go there instead of trying to control and avoid, right, and avoid your emotions by be, being busy with your career. That's what I see here. Like, ask yourself, why am I running? Capricorn, full moon Capricorn. Why am I running? What, why am I doing this? What's my motivation? It's got to be connected to the, your divine feminine, right? Those are good questions to ask yourself, Aries. Just wanted to check something here before we go. Yeah. And I mean, letting go of control because you got the control card, Aries, is, um, is um, just trust, right? When you're not bound to the mind because people are like, well, how can I survive without the mind? Well, we can survive perfectly without the mind, you know? When we're empty, that's where the wisdom comes, not the knowledge. That's where the facts and figures that the mind is holding but true wisdom and this is when you're inspiring and you're creative and you're patient right if you're a leader right with the 10th house there right and embracing the mystery we have to really start to trust ourselves, like our big ass self now to navigate through life that the answers will come right when as they're needed answers will come as they're needed yeah the mind's not going to try to control life through the mind. It's not equipped. It's not equipped. Have you noticed we're seeing more mental health issues, right? More and more of that happening. It's because the mind is dismantling. It's starting to dismantle.
because we're expanding in awareness. We're coming into our true self. So we have to learn to live without control, using the mind to control. Um, okay. Chase, that goes there. That goes there. Okay. Okay, so let's go for Taurus here. The bull. Okay, <clears throat> and Taurus. Taurus, it's happening in the ninth house. The shadow. Full Moon and Capricorn. This is all about your world view, how you view the world. Are you seeing the world like a prison? The world is a prison, and I'm a victim, I'm a slave. Or are you seeing it as a five-star hotel, and I'm, I'm the king or queen, right, of my life? Those are the two views you can take with that ninth house. It's about optimism, right? It's about the, the glass is half full, glass is half empty. We got to choose with the ninth house. So there can be some obsession there, needing to know. Needing to know the world, you know, and it's a mystery. This world's a mystery, it will always be a mystery. Okay, what's Taurus? What's the ego telling Taurus? What's that ego telling Taurus? What's the ego telling Taurus? What's the ego telling Taurus? Oh. Interesting. So Taurus got the dark night of the soul. In the ninth house. So this is your spirituality too. The ninth house rules. Well, religion. Going through the dark night of the soul. So the dark night of the soul. Everyone's got to go through it. This is when it just seems like there's blocks everywhere. There's no light. But remember what I told you. God always sends you some light. But it's about having faith. Right? Right? What's the card? Yeah. Okay. Let's all see what the ninth house is here. It's about expanding too, expanding your point, your uh, perspective with the ninth house. It's about teaching too. The ninth house is about teaching. Maybe you're being called to expand into that um, position as a teacher, spiritual teacher. It's about inspiration. Yeah. And the dark night of the soul is like the it's like the the womb. You know, when you're coming out of the canal of the womb. We probably all remember if we want to coming out of that womb, right? And that's the dark night of the soul. It's like you can barely see maybe a glimpse of light ahead of you, right? But you've got to just keep trusting and keep moving forward. Keep hopeful, right? Keep optimistic. Like I said in my last video that you're going to be okay, right? I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. I'm just going to go through this um, experience. And it's about expanding. It's about like the bulls can get very limiting, right? With their blinders on, you know? And this isn't the ninth house. The ninth house is like, get those blinders off. Expand your, expand your point of view, right? Allow this wisdom to come through for you. And you got the king of, um, you got the king of fire. That's the king of wands there. And that's a man with the wand by his uh, tree. So this is saying to embrace 
the king of uh, fire energy, the king of wands energy. And the king of wands is like the leader. The king of wands is the visionary seeing into the future, right? And they're inspirational. This doesn't matter if you're a man or woman, right? You could be the queen of, queen of wands if you want to. This is a person that's inspirational, charismatic, and innovative. So it's being, you're being called to become more innovative innovative and to embrace remember I, one of those videos that i did i talk a lot about the archetype i forgot which one it's called which one it's titled to move out of this dark night of the soul you know the king of the king of wands is not afraid of the dark night of the soul right this is why your spiritual warrior comes out you know that i can i can handle this i can go through this experience i'm just having an experience that's what I tell people if they're going through a challenge. I, I say, it's like you're just simplify. You're just going through a human experience. That's all that's happening. You're going through a human experience, right? And the dark night of the soul is your test. It's a spiritual test. And Taurus actually had the shamanic death last time, right? With the Saturn. I remember that in the 10th house. So um, you want to choose you want to choose the glass is half full, not the glass is half empty and not listening to worm tongue, the ego that's going to tell you all kinds of nightmare stories of what's happening. You don't want to listen to worm tongue telling you what the world is. It's going to be a very limited perspective. Worm tongue's never going to say, oh, you're just in the dark night of the soul, right? It's okay. You're going to you're going to get through this. You're going to be tested and get. No, worm tongue's going to be like it's always going to be like this, Taurus. It's always going to be bleak. There's no hope for you and then out comes the card, right? This is this is when you know that the ego is like the jig's up for the ego when the ego comes out with, "Well, you might as well just kill yourself." Like just kill yourself. It's got to be better than this. You know, that's when you know because that's what this kind of stuff that happens in the dark night of the soul because you're not, you lose hope, right? There's darkness. It's like I, I, my intuition's gone. I'm not feeling anything in my heart. It's just like total bleak. And all that's there is this guy, the wor you and worm tongue in the dark room, right? So this is you reaching. Ninth house, right? You're reaching, Taurus, for the light, it's like, I know it's there. I can't feel it. I can't prove it exists. This is like this, the shadow of psychosis, right? I have no proof. Mainstream media is not telling me that any of that stuff. They're telling me lies, right? I don't even know it exists, but I have the faith. I'm reaching. I'm reaching for the light, right? Anyway, right? Anyway, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have faith anyway. I have no proof. I can't feel it. I've been there. I've totally been there, but I'm gonna that's how I how I dealt with it. It's like I'm gonna have faith anyway. I'm I'm taking that step into the darkness, you know? And this is the king of the king of wands energy, right? Is to to innovative, to know, like have that self esteem and self respect that that I can do this, right? I can move through this because it's just a test. To me, it's a spiritual, spiritual test. The dark night of the soul is like, do you really have faith, right? Can you have faith when times are the darkest, right? Do you stand the tallest when times are the darkest or you go belly up and go into victim? That's the test. So let's see what the gift is here. So to keep your optimism, even when there's no proof, <laughs> this is a good one. Okay, that's funny. Humor, <laughs> that's great. I love that God has a sense of humor. So the dark, <laughs> the dark night of the soul is to bring humor, humor into your life. So that's a great way to raise your frequency too, Taurus. Is to um, is to laugh. Have you noticed that when you la when you laugh, your uh, 
your whole energy shifts, right? I love making people laugh, especially like serious, serious people, because they just change, they shift, you see them shift right before your very eyes. Yeah. So try to make light of this, pardon the pun, right? Dark night of the soul, just make light of it. I'm just going through a human experience. There's nothing to be afraid of because nothing can harm me. The light, the internal light that I am, I was never born, never died, you know? And then to bring this confidence, the king of, the king of fire is confident, yeah. And a great movie, I mean, that I love, just absolutely love, is Groundhog Day. <laughs> I've watched that so many times. He's living the same day over and over and over and over again. And it's such a, it's such a perfect metaphor for the spiritual journey, you know? So try to, to bring more humor into your life, Taurus, during this time of this Capricorn. Lighten up your ninth house. And the great thing that I've learned in my experience is I'll go through these crazy experiences sometime and I'll like, why did you, why did you give me that experience, God, I'll ask right it's like it was so bizarre like uh, but I'll, I'll go into i'm just having a human experience i'll move through this and uh remember this is also has to do the dark night of the soul has to do with your deepest fears like your unconscious fears that you have to confront they'll be right in your face during the dark night of the soul anyway back to my story right why did i have to go through this this makes no sense at all well, a week, two weeks, maybe a month later, somebody will come to me with help, wanting help, right? Wanting some guidance from me. And they went, they're going through the exact same thing I went through, like, you know, four weeks ago or even longer, a year or two years ago. So sometimes we go through these experiences so we can teach others, we can guide others, right? That's the ninth house. So to look at it like that. So more humor. Right, and that will bring the optimism back. So if you find yourself getting really serious, <laughs> it reminds me of this story that uh, back in the day, back in Vancouver, when I was part of the Kundalini Yoga meditation community, and it's very Sikh, right? Very Sikh that community, and I was had it. I was at it for Sikhism for sure. And so there's the Gudwara, that's like the the te the temple, right? The church for the Sikhs. So we're there in the morning. We do morning sadhana from 4.30 to 6 a.m. and then go into the Gadwara and then they open up the city Guru Grand side and do the ritual and all that stuff. And so I know these people, right, all these leaders that have been there for 30 plus years. And so I'm sitting there and I can feel the seriousness, right? And religion is so serious. Religion can get so serious, you know, and heavy. And I'm looking at the people around me and they're just, you know, like me, the mean face on, the serious face on. And I could feel myself, like I was feeling myself and I, and I was like, I, I don't feel like myself. Like I feel constricted and like I'm getting serious too. <laughs> so, I, so I told myself, I said, I'm going to start, I'm going to smile. I'm <laughs> just going to smile. And it was like this huge effort to like get, the, get my cheeks up and smile, right? So I started smiling, and they were looking at me like I was insane. Because <laughs> I just had this smile on my face for no reason. But I started to feel more like myself. Like right away, it's like I smiled, and I was like, oh, I feel like me again, right? So um, that's what I would say to Joris, is not to get too serious, right? Through this dark night of the soul, we all, we all have to go through it, right? So you're going to have your chance. And if you've been through it before, you know what you're in for, right? Just like, it's all about crying, right? Just feel the emotions that come up and have a cry and face those fears, those unconscious fears that are, you're being confronted with so you can transcend them. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome for Taurus. Got to get the funny face on. I, it's funny, I just remembered that story about the Gadwara. I thought it was pretty, pretty wild. <laughs>
and clearly I went off that trajectory, right? It wasn't, it's not my, I was born with Neptune retrograde, so I'm not about religion at all in this lifetime. I've already done it many, many lifetimes. This lifetime for me is about having my own direct experience with the divine. Because religion is believing in someone else's experience of the divine, and spirituality, if you want to call it, is having your own direct experience with the divine. Okay. <laughs> so where are we now? We're the twins. Geminis. The Geminis. There's the Geminis. The twins. Oh, they got the heavy one, don't they? The Geminis. No, that's not right. No, is that right? 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Yeah. So Gemini has the shadow of psychosis in their eighth house. So that's like, whoo, obsession on steroids on the out the eighth house for Gemini's plus the Gemini's too. So they're uh, Gemini, right? Mercury rules Gemini, so they're already in the mind. And then the eighth house connected to the eighth house. Yeah. So Gemini could probably feel like they're going kind of crazy, right? With their mind just going all over the place with the eighth house. But it's endings and beginnings, so that's good. There could be some obsession, too, around um, money. Is this other people's money? Your ta taxes. Somebody you share resources with. So it could be your marriage partner, Gemini, that you're being obsessive about. Something has to be simplified, you know, around your money. Maybe your partner's got to stop spending so much money, right? Things like that. Like to look at where you can, where you need to cut and conserve. Where's Gemini? I feel like that's part of our lesson too with this inflation that's going on. Because it's a contraction, right? How the universe works is like we contract and then we expand. But we're continually expanding. You have to, you have to know that. We're always expanding. Our awareness is expanding. The universe is expanding. It's infinity, right? So even when we're contracting, it, we're, contract, we're contracting to expand even more, right? So just to, to trust that, it's like we're not, we're in this, humanity is in this state now where we're contracting. You can feel it, right? We're going, we're, the lockdowns and all that stuff, that's all coming back, right? It's just more and more and more and more contraction so that we can expand even further for the Aquarian age. So you got ancestral patterns, Gemini. So wounds that are passed, and that's so eighth house, right? It's all those things that are buried, buried. Uh, so in it's wounding, right? Deep wounds and traumas passed down from one side of your family. So if you want to look at um, if there were poverty issues, you know, a dependence. It's codependent too. And codependence could be financially, like one of your your mother was dependent on your father financially. Or you, and your grandmother and your great-grandmother and things like that. You want to look at these patterns that you're feeling, right? Because remember, these emotional wounds, these emotional memories, they're, they're coming up to be transmuted. And the one that's alive now, like you, if you're the black sheep of the family, then you're here to alchemize those old ancestral wounds. So it could be like an illness that you're dealing with or low self-worth. That could be a pattern too. Scarcity, right? Scarcity, eighth house scarcity. And this dependence, right? So you may be forced to depend on your marriage partner or someone else or the government for your income. And it's like, I feel so blocked and I feel so trapped. It's because you've got to transmute those feelings, right? Those traumas or heartbreak too from the marriage partner. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. So you got the five, the five of Earth, or the five of Pentacles. And you can see her. She's like outside the church. There's an angel in the church. And this is about scarcity consciousness. So Gemini is worrying about money, being left out from money, feeling that lack, right? Um, and then the two, this is all about money, right? This is like the two of Earth, the two of Pentacles. And this is like the back, the back and forth, dealing with a lot of stress, money, stress, worrying about money. Yeah, feeling like you're losing your balance. So Capricorn's in there and showing you to balance, that you need to balance. So the thing is with money, I was meditating on this the other day with money. I've got Pluto in the second house, so it's been a lifelong lesson for me relationship with money like learning that is um like i said we're transmuting all this energy these ancient fears right from our ancestry that um it's all going on inside of us right it's all in here it's all in here but things outside of us take on that energy because as a humanity we've all agreed that, okay, our fear of survival has to go somewhere. Where, where is it going to go? Okay, what do you think? Well, let's, we'll have this money system, right? So we all agree that this is our fear of survival is like embodied in money, right? So, so that's, that's how it's projected outward. But it's actually coming from inside of us, each one of us right? From the unconscious. This is our unconscious fear of survival is being projected onto money. Money's just neutral. Pieces of paper and coins. That's all it is. Where it has the power is the power that we give it as a humanity, right? So for you, Gemini, it's about not going into this, like I'm five of pentacles. I'm being left out. I'm, I'm impoverished, I'm this, I'm, you're not any of that. You're I am, I am. You've got to go to your identity. I am, I am. I'm having a human experience of poverty that's been passed down from my ancestors because I have to transmute this. Not from a victim state, but an empowered. I'm an empowered being, right? And I've been given this task by my ancestors. So I'm going to let go of the worry. I'm going to let go of these thoughts of scarcity because you're not scarce, right? It's just a mindset. This is the shadow of psychosis. It's just a mindset. So if you don't have enough money, let's use this. I don't have enough money right now. I don't have enough. Maybe you're in a little bit of debt. You're behind the eight ball. Everybody's behind the eight ball right now in one area of their life. I don't have enough money. Well, bring it back to yourself right? What you're really saying is I'm not enough. That's what it really needs. It has nothing to do with the money. The money's neutral. It's like, I'm not enough. And then you look at that. I'm not enough. And then it's like, I'm worthless. I have no value. You go to those dark spaces. That's what shadow work is. And that's from your ancestors. But if you stay locked in this, White with worm tongue, the ego, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be in the obsessive mind. That's not the root. Because worm tongue's going to have you focus outside of you. Well, I just need more money. I need this. I need that. And then I'm going to feel better because that's really what he's telling you. And then you'll feel better. Then you feel like you have value. It's not going to work that way. It's inside. You've got to go to the deeper right? The deeper emotions, what, what's coming up from the unconscious for you, right? So if you're just watch your language, I don't have enough money means I'm not enough. Whatever you're projecting at word, you're saying about yourself, right? And you have everything that you need inside you. Yeah. And this is about balancing your energy. The two, of, the two of pentacles is balancing your energy and prioritizing too. Yeah. So their ancestors, ancestral stuff, poverty. 
you know, we've all had, <laughs> we've all had lifetimes. We all have ancestors that uh, have gone through horrific experiences. You know, we've had, we've had the full gamut of ex human experiences on this planet. I think we're almost run out of human experiences. But this one has to be transmuted because it got passed down, gets passed down through the, our DNA, you know, these patterns, these ancestral patterns. Yeah. So forgive your ancestors for passing this down to you and just feel it. It's the feel of feeling of that physical survival, right? It goes down to that. We have to transcend our fear of the material world for the Aquarian age and on the spiritual path. That's Wormtongue's biggest trump card is you won't survive physically. Okay, what's the gift for Gemini? Yeah. Oh. Gentleness. Gentleness. So being gentle with yourself. Right? The eighth house is traumatic. Right? All the trauma is there. So not to go into the obsessive mind and trying to control it. Like what's coming up. Especially when you're dealing with low self-worth. Low self-value. You know? That you're not enough. Because you're, you're feeling all that from your, from, from, uh, your ancestral line. So this is saying to be gentle, right? And just to remember that there's a way through every block, right? Because the five of pentacles too, they don't talk about, is that she's put herself outside. She can walk through that door if she wants. There's help there. So it's an illusion. Wormtongue will tell you there's no help for you. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody cares about anybody on this planet. Just a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That's what the ego is going to tell you. And it's a lie. Because this is divine help, too. That's what it's showing you. That you have the key. You can unlock this door if you want to. Right? And this is coming back to yourself. And knowing without a doubt that you have everything you need. You know? But being gentle. Like, really be gentle with yourself. These are like some really tender wounds as a humanity. That's the thing that I remember is that everybody's going through their battles. We don't know what people are going through. So let's, we have to be compassionate with one another. Okay. Okay, that's Gemini. And then we're for Cancer. Let's go, Cancer. Cancer the crab. And we're in Cancer season. Happy birthday, Cancers. It's an emotional time. And Cancer's the opposite of Capricorn. Okay, so that's going to be in your seventh house. Okay. So the shadow of psychosis, full moon uh, Capricorn for Cancer is in the seventh house. So Cancer, rising sun or moon in your seventh house. So you can be obsessing about your partner, have obsessive thoughts about your partner. Your mar it could be your marriage partner too. Uh, anyone that you have a contract with, Cancer. Let's see what the card is. Trying to use your mind to figure out, you know, so if you're going through a separation with your partner right now, it's all about, yeah. Yeah, that fits. So you got the denial card. Yeah. Let's see. 
So that's de denying that there's any problems with your uh, partner. Not wanting to look at it. Or if you're separating, let's say you're separating, denying that um, <clears throat> that you're hurting inside, you know? And getting into the mind, like trying to control it. You know, like going into, oh, we're separating, so get into logic, right? Get into the intellect and the, obs and the obsession with, well, these are the logical things that have to happen, like when we separate. And it's all about keeping denying your emotions, right? Because it's a grieving when we separate. Because we're going through musical chairs right now in our relationships. That when a relationship ends, it's like a death. There's a grieving that takes place. And that's the work that, that, that is called for, for we humans. We don't want to be lobbing bombs at each other, you know, when we separate. It's not a good or bad thing that we separate on a spiritual perspective it's um there's a purpose to every relationship and some relationships last a, you know a couple moons and then other relationships last like your whole lifetime okay <laughs> cancer needs some big guns because cancer got three cards so you got the strength card and this is uh Courage, having courage, compassion, perseverance. The magician, to remember that, because there may be some codependent issues here with your partner, is that uh, you have everything you need inside you to manifest. And listen to the beginning, the collective read, because they've got the, they got the magician too. And then the eight of water, the eight of cups, and that's walking away, Right? So any obsession about like, we'll stay together, we'll be able to stay together if I do this and I do that. It's like it's time for Cancer rising, Cancer um, moon and sun to be walking away, right? To what's not fulfilling you emotionally. Because she's walking, right? She's walking to the angel. She's walking away. It's like I've had enough of this relationship. It's time to, be walk, to walk away and I've got the strength to draw upon and do it. And I'm not in denial anymore about this relationship that's not making me happy, I've, right? Because the obsession is, well, if I did this, and well, what if I left and this would happen? Or I better stay because, you know, to keep the house, like I said at the beginning, whatever it is. And this is denying yourself. It's really about a denial of yourself, that you are all powerful. The magician, you can manifest what you want. And the thing with cancers, what I like to tell cancers, they're never a long, they're never single for very long cancers because everybody loves cancers, right? So even if you're in the, if you're not, the, I'm not saying jump in another relationship right away, unless you're ready, right? Is, uh, yeah, that you're lovable. Cancers are very lovable. And it's to walk away. And, uh, Single, I would just want to, the single cancers. I don't know if there's many single cancers out there. These cancers get taken, scooped up pretty fast. The single ones may be denying that they want a relationship, you know? That they can manifest, because it's the magician, just to know that you can manifest that. And to go towards what makes you happy. Yeah. Okay, what's the gift for the... Cancers, but not listening to your mind, right? Your mind's going to have a million and one reasons why you should stay in a bad relationship. Okay. Well, we got a double here. So there's a way through every block. So to remember that there's a way through every block. Yeah, and that's one of the sutras for the Aquarian age. Just to know that wherever there's darkness, there's always light. God always sends help, right? In your darkest hours. So your relationship's leaving. There's going to be somebody that comes in. Something comes in that's like a, like a lifeboat for you, right? To help you. So just to, to know that. But you've got to look, you know, like I said at the beginning here. Cancer. This is the Four of Cups, 
right? You can't be like, oh, the relationship didn't work out and I feel like a failure and there's nothing for me. And then look, she's got this cop coming to her. She's not even looking. She's on the pity potty, right? To know that, like help, help is there, but you gotta, you gotta look. You gotta know that there's a way through every block. You gotta remind yourself there's a way through every block. There's a way through every block. Okay, what else for cancer and the psychosis? Yeah. Yeah, and it's time to just empower yourself. You may have been piggybacking a person, right? The image I had with cancers, because this relationship stuff's been really up for them. They've got, uh, they've got um, a lot of stuff going on in the eighth house. Right, they've got that turbulence, the shadow of turbulence in the eighth house. Saturn's in there. It's been in there for a while for cancer. So I've been really feeling like the cancers. Is um what was I gonna say with that? Is to not be afraid. Right? To not be afraid to, to walk away and to know that you deserve, that's what I want to say. You deserve to be happy and fulfilled. And that's what the divine wants for you, is to be happy and fulfilled, right? So this is a time to get back. Oh, I know. I had the image of the cancers, like piggybacking their partner. They want to go forward on their spiritual journey, and they've got this heavy weight on them because their partner doesn't want to go there. It's not interested in spirituality at all, right? That's what I'm feeling with the cancers. And that this is your time. Because cancers give, right? They give, give, give. They're very nurturing. Is putting the partner down, right? That you, you have to move forward. Sometimes we have to make that choice. And it's a hard choice to make. You know, I can't carry this person. I can't fix this person. But I'm committed to my spiritual journey. And I'm moving, and I'm moving forward. So to trust your heart. Trust what's happening in your life and just keep moving forward and that you've got the strength and that the ability to manifest. That's what this is saying for cancers. Okay. There we go. Okay. Leo. <laughs> okay, Leo. Cancer Moon, Ma Ma Massachusetts, jumped in my brain. Okay. Okay. So let's go uh, for Leo. Where's Leo? There we go. Okay, Leo the Lion is in the sixth house. The shadow of uh, psychosis in the sixth house. And this is about uh, your daily habits, too. So there could be with uh, uh, this obsession with, um, with your work, right? Or your health it can be an obsession there, too. Let's look at uh, the cards first so we can, uh, we can focus here. It's also giving. I feel like Leo's got to uh, balance because this the full moon in Capricorn too is about balancing your uh, can't the your emotions, Cancer, your feminine energy with your masculine energy. And the sixth house can be like totally overgiving, like overworking yourself. So the balance there is like the twelfth house. The twelfth and six are the axis is relaxing more, letting the divine carry some of the weight. It's like that old Indian story from India where, um, um, you know, you wear you get the carry the big suitcase on your on your uh, head and then you get on the train. Right. They get on the train. Some some people are like they keep the suitcase on their head when they're on the train. It's like take the suitcase off. Right. Take it off your head and put it on the train. You're going to end up the same 
place. Do you know what I mean? Like Leo needs to, to just to, to, uh, to depend on the divine more that you don't have to do everything yourself. Carry the load yourself. That you can relax more. This is for Leo. Oh, interesting. Okay. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. So it's the hiding. The ego is telling you to hide. And where? how can you hide? With your work, right? The sixth house is all about your daily activities and the details of your, of your life, your habits, right? Your daily habits that you do. So this is playing it small, right? Not showing up. Not showing up in your life. And what are you fearing when you're hiding is the greatness of your soul. You're fearing your higher purpose. Yeah. So you can play small, right? This is what the ego says is to play small. But the agenda here is like when you play small, you know, like don't don't look to me, don't look to me, don't have any expectations of of me, right? And it's to avoid, it's to avoid responsibility, because you got so much going on in the in the tenth house, right, Leo's? You got you got the North Node in the tenth house. You got uh, Uranus in the tenth house that's about to go to the North Node. There's a lot of activation happening in your 10th house. And that's your sole purpose. So you could be like, it's busy, right? It's busy, busy. It's like Virgo, you know, Virgo energy in the 6th house. Like getting locked into mundane little details. Yeah. And needing to know, getting lost in the trees, right? Not seeing the bigger view. Getting lost in the minutiae of life, you know? But it's all about avoiding. It's all about hiding. You're hiding yourself, Leo. Okay, let's see what the card is for Leo. And not showing up as your great self, right? The lion. The lion's the king of the jungle. And the, the sun. Okay, do we have a card for Leo or not? Obsession. So obsessed about little details. Yeah. So it's about how you spend your time too, Leo. You know. Oh. So you got the ten of swords. The ten of swords. So it's uh it's an angel. You can see an angel surrounded by these swords with an hourglass, which means time is up. So there's an ending happening in the way that you're working, you know? So endings, recovery, freedom. It's that the, the traditional tarot is the guy with the, on, his, on his stomach and he's got like the 10 swords all on his back. It's just an end, right? It just says an ending. So there's an ending of hiding. Hiding behind your work, hiding behind the desk, hiding behind your habits. So watching the habits that you have. Are they really serving your sole purpose? Are they preparing you for your sole purpose? Is it preparing you for the greatness of your soul, right? Or is it keeping you small? Let's see what the other card is. I think I know what this other card is going to be, but let's see. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a betrayal, too. You can feel betrayed by the sixth house. The sixth house, too, is about uh, um, open enemies, too. There could be fear of that. Jeez, we got this three times now. There's a way through every block. So you may be feeling blocked in like six house matters, 
right? Um, you can feel like a slave in the sixth house too, like you're chained to your your desk and your uh, work routine. Um, it can also be debt. You can be dealing with debt too. Um, and enemies. Uh, and also um, crisis, that's right. Crisis, the sixth house can be crisis, so attracting some kind of tr crisis to you. Right, whatever that is, some kind of crisis. That, um, and it's to get you, it's to get you out of this, right? It's get to get you out of this hiding. That's what I see there. And not playing it small. You know, I think, I'm just thinking of the story of uh, Tibet. You know, Tibet, when China invaded Tibet. And all the Tibetans were like scattered. They got scattered all over the world, right? The Tibetans. That uh, they were asking the Dalai Lama how he felt about that. And they were, they were expecting him to say it was horrific and it was so unfair. And what he ended up saying was, uh, well, it was a real gift because we got to spread these teachings around the world. So that could be what's happening. Yeah, that you're, um, let's just do another card for the 10 of air here, that you're being forced <laughs> to come out of hiding. Yeah. Okay. emotional today I can feel the emotions tomorrow's the new the full moon okay let's see if we <laughs> have some another card for Leo's any Leo moon or rising or Sun coming to Leo suits Leo season soon I just want to say too that there's support because Leo can feel in the sixth house that they're alone in all of this, that there there is support. There's divine support, right? Like look to the twelfth for the balance, the divine support. And the thing with the divine is we have to ask, you know, we have to ask and request support. Yeah. Okay. Not get obsessed. Okay, we have a nice card for Leo here. Oh, there's one. Okay, great. This one. Okay, this is good. I felt like I needed a, we needed another one to top it off here. So the Ace of Fire. So that's the Ace of Wands. You can see the angel and then the little girl with the wand there. So this is opportunity, creativity, action. Yeah. So this fits with the inspiration, the gift of uh, this uh, pattern for this full moon. His inspiration is coming, creativity is coming, and then action, right? The ones are all about action. So that's what I feel. It's like your old ways, your old way of working is uh, in your old like daily habits, like get ready, right? That's, it's ending, that's ending. And you're coming into a whole new phase. Yeah, in terms of your work. But it looks exciting, right? Aces are always good signs. That's new beginnings. Like it's a passionate new beginning. This is all about passion. Yeah. Okay. I think the monks, the Leo monks out there will relate to this one. Right? The hiding. Yeah. Okay, that's for Leo. Let's put these back here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I think that's the theme is that there's a way through every block. People are feeling blocked in their life right now. Okay. So let's go for Virgo. And that's going to be in your fifth. One, two, three, four, five in the fifth. House. All right, there we go. Four, five. So children. So Virgo, Sun, Moon are rising. The shadow of... Uh, psychosis the gift of inspiration is in your fifth house so this could be like obsessive thoughts around your uh children if you have children if you're a mom or dad but also about your romantic life you can be obsessive about your romantic life your romantic partner having obsessive thoughts about your romantic partner or your creativity if you're an artist but let's see where the focus on here. Okay. That's the card for Virgo. Oh. So roles. You got roles. So Virgo is playing a role that she or he is obsessed with. So if you've got children, then you're going to play that role of a parent, right? getting obsessed with your role as a parent and it's difficult when the children are growing up because your identity switches with their identity you know as they grow up they let they need their mother and father less and less you may be overly attached to this role obsessed about it obsessed about your children but using your children and this obsession to avoid the deeper feelings. Okay. 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 So you've got the two of fire or the two of wands. You see those two people. So this is about partnering up, planning. So this could be your romantic partner then in progress so being called to let go of a role so how the roles go because the fifth house is the inner child too is that we play child we get into these roles in our childhood and it's all about keeping the family in harmony children naturally do this right because remember we've got mom and dad you know the typical family mom dad brother sister right there's the four individual, but then there's the, an entity called the family, right? And to order to keep the entity called the family, it needs to be in harmony. So what happens is children will sacrifice their true self, like they'll move away from their authentic self, and then they take on this role, and it's all about keeping the... They do this unconsciously. We all do it, right? To keep the harmony of the family. And But what happens is we end up internalizing that role and believing that it's us and so this is saying that you're bringing that role into this partnership this romantic partnership that you're in right now and you're planning for the future right but you you're being called to let go of this role whatever role you're in so if you're in a good partnership they're not they're going to see through this they're going to you're not being authentic like why why are you doing this you know They'll call you on stuff if they're a good partner because a good partner just wants you to be your authentic self, right? So that's what it's saying is to drop the roles. And this can be scary for people that have been in relationships. And the, well, the dynamic's always this way. I'm always like this and my partner is like this. And here's my script, right? That I learned from my childhood. And this is how, this is what I was validated for. This is what I get was given praise for. You know, and then it's like, well, wh 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 what do I say then? Wh 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 what do I do? How do I behave when the script goes, right? So then you, you're moving away from the mind, this obsessive mind, right? And you're moving into that, sp into the space of we have to transcend the mind for the Aquarian age, right? We're into this awareness, right, Virgo, 
you know, this awareness that's getting away from the ego, getting away from the mind. Now, I've got that great uh, meditation for you to do, the dilute the ego. But this is stepping away from the roles that you've taken on as, as a child, that I'm not that. And embracing the mystery. That's the gift of inspiration, is you're embracing the mystery of who you are, right? That you're not this little role that you've been. Do you see how it's like it can be a scary time for people, not just Virgos, right? Because we're we're all going through this shamanic death. We're like the phoenix rising from the flames, each one of us. And it's, well, I'm not this. I was talking to someone last night, and uh, I said it's like there's two, there's kind of, th well, three types of people. The people that are kind of outside, like the helpers, the light workers, probably all of you watching, you know, that we're here to help people transition into this new age of Aquarius. And then there's people that are like in the womb and they're, they're happy and they're learning in, in darkness through the embryos. No judgment. That's their destiny is to learn. And we've all been there learning in darkness and that's their right. And then there's the others and they're crowning, right? Corona, they're crowning, right? The babies that crown, right? The head's coming out of the womb, right? But the people that are crowning, are like they're looking around and it's like, well, it's too uncomfortable to go back there, like to go back in the womb. I can't go back in there. It's way too uncomfortable. But this is, this is too scary. This is unknown, right? This is totally unknown. And this is who we're here to help. When I learned this, it like just was a lot of burdens just dropped from my shoulders. It's like, oh, I'm not here for everybody. Just the people that are crowning. And the people that are crowning are going to reach for you. They want you help, your help. The embryos don't want your help, right? They just want to be in the darkness. That's their right. That's their destiny to be in the darkness. And maybe next time or maybe 100 next times. Who knows, right? before they're crowning. So um, where was I going with that? Oh, with the roles. So you're dropping the role. You're that baby coming out of the womb, being birthed as a new you, and this has to go. And I'm sure you're feeling it, Virgo. It's like, I can't do this anymore. I hear this from so many people in relationships. I can't play this role anymore with this person. I'm going to implode. It's not me. I just, I can't do it anymore. That's the authenticity that's coming through, right? That's being birthed. So that's what I see with Virgo, is that you're going into the future with this two fire, and this has to go, right? These roles have to go. And it sounds like you've got a good partner with you, right? A romantic partner to, to do that with. Okay, so let's see what the gift card is here okay well, another double so restraint restraint and retreat yeah so uh because pisces pisces got that too so chat you have a connection with pisces i would listen to that too is um this is saying the go within like go within restrain going into these old scripts and now you're going to have that gap of awareness with the capricorn full moon to like i can't i'm not doing that make the choice no i'm not playing this role anymore i don't know what's how i'm going to do it but i'm just not going to play it right and then to retreat go within like who am i who am i ask yourself that question how do i want to be in this relationship, this new relationship, right? And it's like it's uncomfortable, right? When you're when you let go of these old roles, it's uncomfortable at first. It can be shaky, but if you go retreat within, you're going to get firm, right? Within, like who you are. Find out who you are. That's what this is saying. Yeah, and do go. And it's also meditation, restraint, meditation. But yeah, it's telling you to let go of these old childhood roles. You might have been a mediator in the family or the golden child in the family or the clown that made everybody laugh in the family. Whatever it is, 
you'll know you're going to feel it. It's like, that's not me. Right. Okay. That's for Virgo. Exciting times of growth and evolution for everybody. Okay. Let's go for Libra, the scales. One, two, three, four. In the fourth house. So there, this is the shadow of psychosis is in your fourth house, Libra, sun, moon, arising. So you can have some obsessive thoughts about your mother or your home. Something's going on with your home or your mother. Um, and let's do some, uh, we'll get into the cards so I can focus. It's also about your personal internal self. So your emotional self. There can be obs obsession there. So the, the obsession remembers the mind. You can't shut off the mind. Right. It's it's just it's focused on these things like a dog on a bone. Right. So it may have to do with your mother. You know, you're focused on something that your mother did or said to you, like, for example, example, Libra. And then you uh, just thinking of something and then you uh, obsess on some little detail. But what you're really doing is you're avoiding those deeper emotions just because it's the fourth house, right? It's the Capricorn in the fourth house. Yeah. We'll see. So you got the compensation, compensation card. So compensation is really interesting. It's acting like you're something that you're not. This is the ego, what the ego tells you. You got worm tongue up here. That's worm tongue, that's the ego whispering in your ear. So it's going against your authenticity. This is what compensation is. So for an example would be, um, uh, secretly you don't, you don't really like children. You don't want children, right? But how the ego would compensate is like they, pr they pretend like, oh, I'm really into children. And they go all out when they're, with children, like playing with children. It's like, it's co compensating. Let's see, let's think of a better example. Someone's a sex addict, here we go. Someone's a sex addict, right? That's what's really going on inside, which means they're objectifying, right? They're objectifying people and objectifying themselves, right? It's an addiction. And then the compensation is they're a prude. Right, they're a total prude. That's what they're showing the world, even though they may not be acting on, you know, sleeping with everybody and, you know, addicted to porn or whatever. But they act like I'm, I'm, I'm a prude. Like, oh, I'm so offended. <laughs> right, I'm so offended at the beach. Right, with the women in the bikinis. I'm, I'm so offended. Right, that's the compensation. That's what the ego does. It's compensate. So it makes you pretend that you're something that you're not. It's, and it's, in a, it's about hiding something from yourself, right? It's about hiding some shadow. Or you feel like, you've, here's another one. You feel like you've got no value. Like you feel like you're worthless. And then you compensate by being a workaholic, right? That would be like another example of that. 
So there's something you're compensating in your home life. That's what's happening. So just look at, like, this is about, well, it's, it's full moon and Capricorn, right? Your emotions are going to tell you where you're compensating. Where are you, like, angry in your home life? Maybe you're, you're in Libras, right? Let's Libras. I forget who I'm talking about here, Libras. Libras like the peace, right? They want peace and they want harmony, right? They want to appear peaceful. Then maybe you're angry inside. Maybe you're agitated, but you're trying to like compensate by being peaceful and calm. Have you ever spoken to those people you know, especially if you're an empath or sensitive and you can feel like, oh, this person's a ball of rage, but how they present, right, is the really nice flowery language and right and everything's peaceful and everything's great and but you feel them and like they're this ball of rage right and they can feel they can uh fool people into believing oh they're all so together and blah 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 <laughs> right? the ones that are in, in touch with their own feelings and can feel that person right or see so there could be something going on there with the Libra that you're compensating for your emotions. Like there's a there's like rumblings happening in Libra, and it could be around your mother in your home life, and you're compensating. You're right, pretending that it's not there and putting this nicey nice face on it. And you got the four of fire, so we got that again. The four of fire. So that's celebration. That's home too, right? Uh, prosperity, contentment, celebration for Libra. So you can have this if you if you're if you're. Um, this is like the happy home, right? So happy home's not happening right now because you're compensating. You're not being authentic, right? We're not going to be rewarded anymore for being inauthentic. We have been for thousands of years in the Piscean age. Everybody was rewarded. Pisces, right? The great illusion. We were rewarded for not being ourselves, but not anymore. Things are flipping, right? For the Aquarian age. So you're not going to be, you're not going to be uh, rewarded for putting that nicey nice face over the ball of rage, whatever you're feeling, right? So you want to be authentic. And this is saying if when you're authentic, then this comes, the happy home. And that's what you want. Contentment, celebration. And then uh, you got the Knight of Pentacles, Knight of Earth. So that's organized, responsible, supportive. Yeah. So this may be showing that you've got to uh, be more supportive in your home life. You know? You may be been given to, right? The balance, the equal balance of give and take is off. Right, because this is what this full moon is showing us too. Is like where where we're out of balance. We're gonna feel it emotionally, and we'll see it where we're out of balance. So this is about being responsible. It's the pentacles, right? It's all about the earth, the earth plane, your material world at home, getting organized at home. That's what this is saying. This is a great energy, you know, with uh, Capricorn because it's so earthy. Is to do some feng shui right? Move some stuff around. If you feel stuck, like move some furniture around, do some spring cleaning, get rid of some stuff. You know, that's a good way to use this, uh, this energy. So this is saying to, uh, yeah, be supportive, organized, responsible, and to create this happy home and being, um, being honest. We have to be start being emotionally honest with one another now, right? That's what that's saying. Emotionally honest. Let's see what that gift is. Okay. What's the gift here? Compensation. Oh. Okay, so it's ask for divine help for Libras. If you feel like you can't get out of this compensation, like, I don't know what that Michael's talking about. I'm not compensated for nothing, right? I'm, I'm myself all the time. We can be in denial like that. Is to uh, 
ask for divine help with this fourth house matter, right? You'll know when you're being authentic because uh, things will start working. Things work, work better when we're authentic. When things aren't flowing, when the things are out of balance, it means that there's some place where we're not being authentic, you know? And compensation is not being authentic. It's not being your true self. This is about being emotionally honest, you know? So, um, yeah, asking for divine help. It's like, I want to be my authentic self. And you've got to sincerely want that. I want to be my authentic self. I don't know where I'm compensating. My home life is like in disarray. I'm having so much, many problems with my home life, with my mother. These are all signs that something needs to be come back into balance. And this is like, this is humbly asking. And the divine will come through. It will show you something. It's like, please show me where I'm stuck. Please show me where there's a shadow. Where's, but you've got to be humble to ask for divine. You can't be bossing, bossing the divine around. Just ask for divine help. Let me see. Because Libras are, this is Libra, the shadow of Libra, this compensation. Pretending one thing and doing another, right? There's like almost two sides to Libra, the nicey nice face out in the public. And then the, when they get back, right? When they've had enough, when they got to explode, they can't compensate anymore, right? This time's about being real. Okay, that's for La Libra and not getting obsessive, right? In that shadow of the obsessive mind. Yeah, because Libra is an air sign, so they can get really into the head. It's about feeling. Have you ever done that? Any Libras? Like just ask for, uh, ask for help. It does work. It's pretty amazing. I've done it. It's worked for me. Especially when it comes to your emotions. And it's like uh, you've got to do, go through this huge challenge. Like go to the dentist. <laughs> right? And it's just like, please, br please bring me divine help. You know, like p peace. Please bring me peace. Help me to get through this challenge, you know. And usually some the angels appear through people, right? You'll They have like this amazing dental hygienist that's so gentle and... The divine help does come through. Okay, let's go for the scorpion. The Scorpios is in the third house. And this is your what this is your thinking, your communication. It's your um, family, it's your siblings. I know a lot of Scorpios have had issues with brothers and sisters or people in their life that are like their brother and sister. Brother or sister or both. Okay. Oh. So we got the hidden self for Scorpio, the hidden self. And this is... Uh, we're going deep now, but that makes sense because we're in Scorpio. <laughs> we're with Scorpio as we're going deep now. So this is a subconscious personality that forms. So what happens in childhood? We've got our roles, but this is deeper, right? This is deeper than a role. This is, um, these are actually uh, connected to my recorded readings because one of the, where is it? My recorded readings also have a meditation that uh, deals with this hidden self, a Kundalini Yoga meditation that deals with this hidden self. So this is a subconscious personality that gets formed in childhood. So what happens is we go through, we go through our childhood and any, we can have a traumatic experience. Most of us have, because we've been brought up in the Piscean age is we fragment, we fragment. And this means that these personalities get formed, right? There can be more than one, but there's usually a dominant one. Dominant one. 
and we believe it that it's us and it actually has a desire the subconscious personality kind of takes a life of its own and it has a, a desire but the desire is self-destructive right because it's it's not authentic you know because remember we're either going towards the light or we're going away from the light it's either it's either or and the subconscious personality is going away right away from the light so you believe that it's you and it has no power because it's not authentic so you can believe you can like the obsessive mind right scorpio this is so funny this is so scorpio what i'm talking about right now right i love talking to scorpios because they like to go they like to go deep and fast right is that um it's got no power because it's not authentic to you right because it's 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 going away from the light anything that's in the light has the power so it's like you've got your plug right you're plugged in when you're in your authenticity i'm plugged into my power i'm with source i'm with the divine when you're with your subconscious personality that's subconscious it's like got the cord but it's not plugged in it's looking to plug into somebody else right so it's very very self-destructive so what it's going to show you in the third house is showing you this your siblings are showing you this this hidden self right this hidden self that's coming up to be healed and seen and so this hidden self can be connected to the shadow right the shadow pattern of obsessive thinking because it's the third house is about thinking like what are you thinking about scorpio these days and then you've got the six of you got the six of fire you see here she's got the the wand up in the air she actually looks like a scorpio so six of fire six of wands that's uh victory so this is saying that you've got the potential in this full moon in capricorn is to have victory this is about regaining your self-esteem success because the hidden self has the desire some desire that you're obsessed with scorpio but nothing's happening you can't manifest it why can't you manifest it because there's no power in this hidden self it's not you so this is showing that you've got a chance for victory here so watch your thoughts what am i obsessed with with the third house what am i obsessed with watch your mind right that's why you need to go into this space right go into this space scorpio this is like to stop this is to meditate come into a greater awareness an expanded sense of awareness and then that little worm tongue the ego is so small that you're able to like oh what am i what am i thinking about what's this hidden self thinking about right what is this hidden self obsessed with that i want right with the third house um but for, in terms of people i mean it's your neighbors or siblings people that you see every day it could be like uh in a team if you're in a small team too it could be those people it's probably a sibling let's see what the other card is or jealousy right jealousy issues can come up with siblings right so the hidden self agenda could be like, I'm going to get back at my sibling. I'm going to be compete with my sibling and I'm going to come on top. It's going to be like a really ego, egoic desire. Scorpio. What's the card for Scorpio? Anyway, that full moon's going to show you, Scorpio, the Capricorn, because it's going to come with a mountain of emotions. Yeah. So faith, you got the faith card. That whatever you're going through right now, right, with this hidden self, because this hidden self has to go for the Aquarian age. Anything not in truth has to go. It has to go. It will just go. So this could be causing you a lot of pain because this hidden self can go right back early childhood. You believe that it's you, right? 
is to have faith. Whatever suffering, because this can create suffering if you're hanging on to it, Scorpio, is to have faith that there's a greater purpose to what you're going through in this uh, third house matter, right? Um, there's a greater purpose to this. And Scor Scorpio is all about, right? They're the snake, right? Shedding their skin. They know all about transformation. This is another deeper, more profound transformation for you. And uh, my sense is it got formed with, the, with your sibling and your family. And your family. Um, and how your mind works. That's the thing, like this, these loops, they're like loops, mental loops with the shadow of psychosis, psychosis that we can't get out of. It seems like we can't get out of, right? These loops that they think, we think that it's us, you know, Scorpio. So that could be like really liberating for you. It's like, oh, those thoughts were connected to a subconscious personality, a hidden self that I had no idea was inside me. And now you're free, right? Look, you're free. And you're in this expanded sense of awareness, right? Expanded awareness right here, Scorpio. And out of this worm tongue in your ear with the obsessive thoughts. And your sister did this. And your brother did this, right? You know? And then the hidden self is, I'm going to get back at them. I'm going to show them, right? I'm going to show them. And then you're off on some crazy desire that's not even authentic to you. I'm going to get to the top of my career and I'm going to show my sister. This is the hidden self. So it can really free up a lot of energy, Scorpio, when you realize that's not me at all. That's the hidden self. And you got victory here. So this is your chance, right? But it takes grieving. That's the emotional work because you're grieving. Uh, old self, right? That we need to take time and we're like, because we're letting go of so much, we need to take time to grieve too. So that's for Scorpio. Okay. And then what do we got now? This crazy Sagittarius. <laughs> The archer. Okay. Okay, Sagittarius. <laughs> Sagittarius is all about the money. All about the money. There can be obsession about money. Right? There can be obsession about money and finances. Let's see the card so we can focus here for the Sagittarius. Obsession about money. Right up at night thinking about money. Waking up thinking about money. Okay. Oh. You got the broken heart. Okay. So like I said with um, Gemini, might want to listen to Gemini too, Sagittarius, about money. So broken heart, this is about your sense of self-value, right? The second house is about your sense of self-value. <clears throat> so not feeling valued and maybe conflate it. And a lot of people do this, not just you, Sagittarius but conflate their sense of self-value, their sense of self with money, right? So the thing is, like I said with Gemini, money's neutral. It's just paper and coins. It's what we project onto the paper and coins as a humanity. So it sounds like to me that you're projecting your own sense of self-value on the, on the paper and the coins, but it's real. the work is really inside you and it's bringing up this pain of a broken heart, 
right? Of a broken heart. And that comes from your childhood, right? Of not feeling valued. Not feeling valued or respected. Maybe your boundaries were overstepped. That can make a child feel like they have no value. Okay. Well, that's good. Let's go. And maybe placing too much value on money. Because it's not our true security, right? And as soon as you do that, as soon as you have that belief pattern of, well, I'll feel secure when I have this certain amount of money in my bank account, then I feel good, right? If I have this certain amount of money in my bank account. Well, what does the universe do, right? The universe will take that money away from you. You'll lose it. You'll lose that money. And to show you what? It will show you that you don't need it, right? That's what it's going to show you. That it, you don't need it to feel self, uh, a sense of self-value. The thing is that you have to maintain your sense of self and self-respect and value yourself, no matter if you've got two pennies in the bank account or you've got like two billion in the bank account. You want the, to, the feel the same. Do you, do you got this? You can't let the external dictate how you're feeling inside, and especially your sense of self-value. You can't let that dictate to you, right? Your value as a human being. Okay, but the point is you got to deal with this broken heart, and that's what the money's bringing up, right? Because money's going to bring up, it brings up survival issues, like I said with Gemini. Right? It represents, what does it represent? Our fear of survival. And that, will, that would come up in childhood because we were so dependent on our caregivers for our survival. We knew this, right? So it's going to bring up the money. The money is just playing a role, right? The money is just the messenger. It's like the, la the lack of money is the messenger to bring up these emotions from your past and this broken heart of like, I, I don't feel valued, whatever it is. Okay, this is interesting. So you got sacrifice, this, the sacrifice card too on top of this. I guess Sagittarius needed, needed uh, another one. Okay. So this is, do, it's called doing God's job right doing god's job so trying to take care of other people for instance like taking on their lessons and this is a compensation too if you want to talk about compensation is um running around especially right this is compensation right here that i just talked about is um right pretending you're one way when you're feeling another so feeling like I have no self-value, so I'm running around doing God, trying to do God's job, sacrificing myself, helping other people. Look, I have value. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing that for you. Look, I'm valuable. You need me, right? And what is it? It's to avoid this broken heart, right? It's to avoid your broken heart and feeling it. And chances are that... Um, Life is not going to let you get away with this. Life's not going to let us get away with these old tricks anymore. Okay. Okay, we got another one. So all your tricks, Sagittarius, all your little tricks are ending, right? For this full moon. All the tricks about avoiding your little broken heart, right? They're all ending. And what it's saying here is to ask for divine help. You know, it's the ego. It's like, I can't compensate anymore. That's not working. Money's not coming in. I can't get more money. That's not working. It's like your ego is totally out of moves. Your ego is totally out of moves. Worm tongue's out of moves. It's got no more moves left. He's like cornered in the corner. And when you're cornered, when the ego is cornered like that, there's what there's no way to go except up, right? And that's to the divine. 
you can't go can't go horizontal anymore you got to go vertical right you got to go vertical you got to go to the divine so this is saying to ask for divine help to ask for divine help right and the real help is like help me to heal my broken heart the real help isn't like give me money oh send me money that's not the lesson the lesson is to deal with your broken heart and your sense of having no value that's the lesson right and then the money will just reflect that back but you, that's the real issue right that's the real issue for you and then you've got the three of cups right that's your pals and your friends celebration community friendship yeah so this is another support for you is your friendship right so asking for divine help because Sagittarians, they like to be free, right? They want to be free. They don't want to be depending on other people. They want to do everything themselves. Well, when you ask for divine help, it may come through your friends. It may come through your friends, not some miracle, miracle that uh, ha miracles can happen, right? But often angels work through, our, through, our, through people. So you, your community and your friendship especially when you're dealing with, and this will help heal your broken heart, right? That you're not alone. Because a, a lot of this broken heart stuff from childhood is we can feel so betrayed, right? From our, uh, whoever broke our heart, a parent, a caregiver, somebody, you know? But that's the point, is just to bring, we're evolving through the emotional body, is to bring all these emotional, emotional traumas up to be felt. So that's what I suspect, is that your friends are there for, for help, right? Sometimes just to go with a trusted friend and have a big cry, like just be open with your friends, like trusted friends that will create a, a safe space for you. And you may be in that mindset of like, well, I'm the one that fixes them and I do everything for them. I'm doing God's job. I'm sacrificing myself. Well, maybe it's time for you to to let yourself be helped, right? That's what I see here. So I would go to your friendship, your community, and it's like, I really just, and the, you know what? Fr if they're a real friend, they'll be so honored that you've asked them, right? To, ha to help you. That's what I see. Okay. The Sagittarians. That. I feel like these, some of these are getting mixed up. Anyway, Sagittarius needed the big guns. Okay. Okay. Where are we now? We're for Capricorn. We're almost done. Okay. Sagittarius, Capricorn. Capricorn. Capricorns are going through such a hard time. I got a message from one today. Through the ringer. But listen, Capricorn. I want to give you hope, Capricorn, <laughs> that uh, Pluto, Pluto has been sitting right on you since 2008. And Pluto is all about like the excavation, you know, it's just like on your head, right? to get you to transform and to get you to change. You probably don't even recognize the person you are now than you were that you were in 2008, right? That's when it all started going down for Capricorn. Um, six more months. It's only six more months and then Pluto's going into Aquarius, right? And then you're going to feel such a, a big relief, right? So you got to look at that. It's like, a dot. think of a diamond, how a diamond's formed, it needs a lot of pressure, right? That coal needs a lot of pressure on it. And it comes out this beautiful gem, right? Faultless. Diamonds are faultless. They come without fault. That's you, like that little diamond inside you, Capricorn. But you're getting pressured by life, by people, by experiences, by your challenges. It's just all to get you to... Um, 
to surrender, right? And this is your time to surrender. This is full moon in Capricorn. This is your sign. It's time for you to surrender to the divine, you know, and let go. Capricorns can be so stubborn, right? It's to let go of what's not serving you anymore. Life's going to show you with your emotions. Oh, I want this. This is what I want. This is what makes me happy, right? Go there. Not the should. Well, I should be practical and I've got to be grounded. I have to be realistic. I do this. It's not that bad. Now we can talk ourselves out of our feelings, right? Right? Your emotions are going to show you. They're going to show you. And you want to be clear, right? You want to be clear. You want to be sober. Capricorns, we need to be sober now. Not be running to addictions. Trying to run from that pressure. <laughs> you can't run and hide from that pressure. And it's just going to get more intense for the Capricorns. So remember if you're a Capricorn uh, rising sun or moon to go and check out Aquarius and uh, Sagittarius too because one of those could apply to you more. It depends on your the degree, your ascendant degree. If this isn't So there can be obsession about your um, appearance. You can have obsessive thoughts about your appearance. So this is different than your body, like the health of your body. This is how you appear, like your beauty, right? Your appearance. There can be obsession about that, that you're not pretty enough, you're not attractive enough, you're not handsome enough. There can be that. There can be uh, obsessive thoughts about your identity. You may be holding on to an old identity, Capricorn, that needs to go. Well, I'm this way. I've always been this way. Like the obsessive thoughts like that. And as soon as you identify, like I say in my videos, as soon as you identify with something, that I'm this, I'm that, immediately, right? Worm tongue, the ego's got to defend it, Right? And you become the channel of, of this ego because the ego is like Velcro. It just wants to attach to all kinds of different things, right? So you may be being called to let go of an old identity, but let's see the cards so we can focus here. <laughs> I just see... Uh, I just had this image of Capricorn just in the in the cocoon, right? In the dark cocoon. Gonna come out as a butterfly soon. Okay. What's Capricorn? What's going on for Capricorn? For the ego. That one right there. Oh. <laughs> Capricorn, this happened before. You're such a hard worker. You got three ego cards. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> I love synchronicity. This is all synchronicity, right? I don't, I don't know what, what's going to happen on these live streams. I must say I laugh. I got to laugh. Because I remember one live stream, Capricorn got three cards, too. Because they're the goats, they're the hard workers. I spent a past, past, my last past life with Capricorn. <laughs> That's why you can laugh. Now, they hold a lot of karma, Capricorns, but once you get older, Capricorn, it gets easier, right? It gets a lot easier. Your life gets a lot easier and sunnier and happier. But you got a lot of karma to pay before that. Okay. Let's see the other card. Okay, well, you got the victim card. So you may be feeling victim, have a lot of obsessive thoughts, victim thoughts around your appearance, around your identity, around yourself, right? The first house is about yourself. Okay, do we have a, do we have a card for Capricorn? Another card. Capricorn, 
patience. Do be patience. There we go. I let the, they have to jump. Okay. Oh. Okay. We got a lot here for Capricorn. So right away we've got endings. This is the death card, 13. You can see the angel and the phoenix. The phoenix coming off the angel's hands and he's like in a, a nice field of flowers, beautiful flowers. Looks like Gandalf, the, the, the white and Lord of the Rings. So end, transformation and freedom. So something's ending. We know that already. So something's ending for this Capricorn full moon for you, right? So this is saying a rough cycle is ending for you. So this is good news, right? This is good news. And you're facing some kind of reality, right? Should I stay or should I go? You're making some important decision for this full moon in Capricorn. Six of air, six of swords. You see that person? He, he or she is in a, in a sailboat. Sailing on, moving on, moving on to better places. So this is relief, it's hope, it's moving on. Endings, moving on, you're moving on from something. And um, so let's go through the, these ego cards here for you. Because the first house represents the ego too. So you may be going through some kind of ego death now, which I sense you are. You're going through an ego death with Pluto there for sure. So this is about how your image, right? Your beauty, your attractiveness, how you show up in the world, your individuality. The first house is about your individuality. And... Um, yeah, and your approach to life, like how you show up to life, that's that's changing now. It's changing. So you got the victim. So you can be obsessed with this, holding on to this old self, right? Holding on to this old self. Why me? The old self whining. Why me? Why does this always happen to me? Why is life so hard? <laughs> right? The, the victim thoughts. It's just in your head. Right? It's the shout of psychosis. It's going on and on and on and on. This happened to me and that happened to me. And, and I'm not diminishing what you've been through, Capricorn. I know Cap Capricorns in my life, right? They've been through the ringer. They've been through the ringer. But you've been through the ringer because you're strong, right? You're strong as a Capricorn. So you got the ego telling you that. So victim is everything, like everything's happening to me. That's the victim. Everything's happening to me. The truth is, it's coming from you. You're attracting these situations to your life so that you can be authentic, right? That you can really be yourself. That's why you're attracting these uh, situations and environments to bring up these emotions, to let go of this, like these old roles. These are identities with the first house that you're letting go of. And then you've got betrayal. And this is worm tongue, right? The ego telling you to um, betray yourself. So how it works is you will attract bet somebody betraying you in your life, okay? Something will happen where you feel betrayed. You think that you're betrayed. Worm tongue's gonna tell you that, that, you're, that someone's betraying you, betrayed your trust or whatever. And, um, you know, I've tried my best and, you know, with my identity and I'm, I'm, the, I'm that person I know he or she wants me to be. And I, I take care of my body and my appearance and I'm doing everything I can and I'm working, working, working. And I still get betrayed, still cheats on me or she cheats on me or treats me like shit, 
right? Well, these experiences are coming up so that you can see that you're betraying yourself. No one's betraying you. You're betraying yourself, sending that frequency out, and then somebody's playing that role for you and betraying you. So this is you betraying your authentic self, right? Putting on this false identity, right? These old clothes, Capricorn, that are so tight on you. You've outgrown them long ago. It's not you anymore. It's like, take those old clothes off. It's time to put some new clothes on. That's what this is saying. It's time to set your sails. It's time to go to your emotional fulfillment. That's what this is saying. Freedom. It's freedom. And then you've got <laughs> the runner. I love this, the runner. So this is the independent ego, right? So the two types of, of um, just one. Um, in terms of this, like we'll just simplify it, simplify it for you, Capricorn here, is there's the codependent, right? The codependent ego flavor, which is I need that person. I need that person to survive. Basically, you're putting God in between, you're putting that person in between you and God. That's what the shadow of codependency is. And then there's the independent ego, and that's another flavor. That's like worm tongues, my God, right? My God is worm tongue. I'm independent. I don't need anybody. Codependent needs somebody to survive, right? Independent is like, no, I don't need anybody. I'm an island, right? And then the ego says here, worm tongue says freedom because it's about freedom because your fear is intimacy, Right? Your fear is intimacy and being seen because it's the first house, like really being seen as yourself. Maybe for the first time in your life, Capricorn, right? To really be seen by like really show your authentic self to someone. Well, the ego will say, well, you're not going to be free. Freedom is when you run away. That's the runner and do everything yourself, right? Because to show yourself Especially when you're really stepping into your authenticity for the first time. It can, you can feel vulnerable, right? Will that person accept me, right? Will that person approve of me? Will that person love me, right? All this, these fears come up. Will I be rejected by them, you know? And so the ego will, will just run away. Right. And what you're really running away from are these feelings. Right. These is this is the possessive thoughts of like, run, I got to run. I know I'm I'm going away. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Listening to worm tongue. Right. So um, but it's not true. And you're not running away from that person. You know who you're running away from? The divine. That's who you're running away from. That's who you're really running away from is the divine. You're trying to hide from the divine, right? And sticking with worm tongue and the ego and thinking that you're free. You know you're never going to be free. Worm tongue's always going to say, promise you freedom. Just do what I say. Don't listen to them. Do what I say. Do it on your own. You can do everything on your own. That's not freedom. You're enslaved to worm tongue. You're chained to worm tongue. You're not free. That's not freedom. Freedom is without worm tongue. That's true freedom right here is when you're in your awareness, when you've transcended the mind, when you've transcended worm tongue, you know? When you've let go of this, uh, this old identity. That's what I feel. It's like this old identity has to go, right? It has to go. So you need to have some kind of shamanic death, and that's what you're going to have this full moon in Capricorn. But look what's coming, right? When you let this go, right? It's true freedom and moving on, moving on to better waters, right? Yeah. And just to remember that whenever I'm running, I'm fearing intimacy. Into me, I see. I'm not allowing another person to see me. And that's one of the top five regrets. I said this before. Of the dying, one of the top, there's a nurse that wrote a book about this that she asked people, 
all the people that were dying on their deathbeds, what were the top five regrets? And one of them was that nobody knew me. I never let anybody get to know me. I never let anybody get to see me. Nobody knew who I was, right? That was a top five regret. So that's what it's showing you, Capricorn. So let's see what the medicine here is. Is to stop running. Stop running because you're just running from yourself. You know, you're just playing it out on the external. And to deal with that fear of intimacy. You know, Capricorn's got to deal with their emotions. You know, and Capricorn are good at repressing and controlling. But that's not the way in this lifetime. This lifetime is we're evolving through our emotional body. You know, and it's to be vulnerable. And it's so healing, you know, when you're vulnerable with another person, when you're emotionally honest with another person. Okay. What's for Capricorn? What's for Capricorn? Right there. <laughs> okay, I gotta get you another one. It's like you got another problem card. Capricorn, super hard working. Okay, let's have a nice positive one for Capricorn. Let's see here. Okay, there's a way through every block. What a theme for this live stream. So it's power struggle again. And that's just, I won't go too much into that. It's uh, in conflict. I mean, that goes with the runner, that runner energy. That you're in a conflict with yourself. This is the obsessive mind, right? So you're either listening to this, your intuition, your heart. That's the conflict. I'm listening to my intuition in my heart. Your intuition is probably very strong right now with the full moon coming up. Your emotions are probably over the roof with a uh, full moon and Capricorn showing you what your next step is. And then the conflict is Mr. Squeaker here, the ego back and forth, right? Back and forth. That's the obsessive, the obsessed, right? Is listening to worm tongue. And worm tongue's always going to get you when you're not dealing with your emotions. As soon as you deal with your emotions, he gets to be Mr. Squeaker. Right when you deal with your emotions, and then you're in tune with your uh, your authenticity and your intuition in your heart, right? And so that's the conflict power struggle you're in, and this can play out. That's the truth, and how it can play out is a power struggle with somebody else. And to me, it's saying it's about you, yourself, right? This new identity that wants to be birthed like the new you, the authentic you, and then you, this old self that's dying, these two, and this old self is connected to a partner, some kind of partner in the seventh house, some person in your life, right? So that that's where the conflict can play out. Well, I'm fighting with this other person. No, you're fighting with yourself. You always bring it back to yourself, right? It just gets played out on the external so you can see it in yourself. Way through every block, so just to remember that there's a way through every block. Yeah. And your way through the block is to be listening. Listening to your intuition. Whatever your intuition is telling you, whatever your heart is telling you, whatever your emotions are telling you, just do it. Right? Just make the step. Take the action. Right? And as soon as you do that, you move out of conflict. You move out of power struggle when you move forward in your life. That's how it works. The, this is all about keeping you, it's an excuse to keep yourself back, right, from moving forward. Okay, that's for Capricorn. Not sure if there's Capricorns out there. And let's finish it off with Aquarius. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Capricorn's doing a lot of work. 
but that means there's a lot the more work you have the more light you have at the end you know okay that, that. okay so Aquarius Sun moon or rising is happening in your 12th house this obsession these obsessive thoughts so let's get the cards going so we can focus here on the 12th house so it's saying that um, things are finishing up because it's the 12th house and these thoughts can be coming coming from your obsessive thoughts can be coming from your past lives because the 12th house is the pa your past lives because you may be like, where is this coming from? Well, it's coming from your past lives, these, these obsessive thoughts. You know, our mind follows us when we incarnate lifetime after lifetime. The mind follows us, that emotional body follows us. Okay. What's Aquarius need to see here? Oh, past lives. <laughs> As if I needed any more validation. So we're dealing with our past lives and obsession in the past lives. Relying way too much on the mind in your past lives, Aquarius. Way too much on the mind so we're looking at the unconscious right with the 12th house so something from your past lives is affecting you in this lifetime and this full moon in the 12th house it's lighting it up right the 12th house you never know what's in there right it's like the 8th house you just don't know what's in there full moon comes in there and it's like the lights come on so you're going to see things Especially in your mind, like what your mind's thinking about. What your mind's obsessed about. Right? Okay. You may have some illumination, Aquarius, about someone in your life that's connected to your past life. Right? Obsessed with somebody from your past life that's here in this lifetime. You know, and it's like, where is this coming from? Your past life relationship with that person, that's where it's coming from. Okay. Okay. So this is the house of forgiveness too, right? Maybe you're letting go of somebody from your past life now, right? That you have karma with, that you've been in a relationship with, you've got karma with, and you're letting them go. Let's see another one. I got the three of pentacles here too. So somebody you work with, possibly somebody you work with. I feel like there's more information though. Like a work, co-worker. Or a co-worker from the past. Maybe you don't work there anymore, but you still have karma with that person. So that's what I would say is, um, is forgive. If that's ringing true for you, like, oh yeah, I have obsessive thoughts about this person, then you need to forgive. Don't like, right? Because the shadow of psychosis wants to know why. Why? Why? I need to know the whole story. Why, why, why? Don't, don't go there. That's just the mind. Go right to forgiveness. I forgive that person and I forgive myself because you want to release. Full moon and Capricorn is you want to be released from that person and you from them because you're going to like, if you don't forgive, you're on that karmic wheel with that person. You're for another ride, another lifetime. And then you've got the Queen of Pentacles, right? You see her, the Queen of Pentacles. Self-reliant, right? She's got it all going on, right? She takes care of herself. This is like the single mom 
the single mom that can take care of herself, she can take care of her children, right? On the material realm, right? So gracious, practical, capable, self-reliant. So um, I don't know. I'm sensing some uh, past life connection maybe with the person from that you're with now that you're ending, right? Because it's the 12th house that you're dependent on financially. You're dependent on that person financially. And it's coming from, it's somebody from your past life. Because remember, whoever holds the purse strings, right? Whoever's financially supporting you is control, controls you. They control you. That's the payoff, right? So there could have been a lot controlling issues from your past, right? Your past life connection with that person. Or maybe you're having that now. So it's with the Three of Pentacles, right? So this is about work. This is about work. And it's saying that you can you can take care of yourself, right? To bring in that Queen of uh, Pentacles energy, Aquarius. Okay. But there's somebody from your past life that you got to that you're letting go of. Okay. 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 So you got protection. Okay. So you don't feel protected. You don't feel protected, Aquarius with this uh, person from your past life or weren't, you weren't, didn't feel protected in your past life. It has to do with money and finances and your work. And then you got the protection card, right? So that means that uh, you're, you're put, you're, you don't feel protected. You certainly don't feel protected by this person, right? And that um, you need to go to divine protection Divine protection. Yeah. So the other flip side could be letting go of this. Um, let me see here. Yeah, let's bring it just back to the individual. I feel like you're making a choice, though, because you got the three of pentacles. You're making a choice to let go of a connection and maybe uh, go to a new connection. Yeah, where, you've, where you do feel protected. But it's saying that you can do this on your own. It's important for you to know that you can do this on your own, that you're capable and practical, right? That you don't have to be codependent on someone and that you're protected, divinely protected. Especially with the twelfth house, because that's the that's the angelic realm, right? The heavenly realms. Yeah. So obsessing, right? Obsessing about this person from your past life. Yeah. And then the other thing too is like just because of the choice that there could be a new person too for you. Yeah. But your emotions, like I don't want to get too much in my obsessive mind. <laughs> it's to listen to your own emotions, right? Your emotions will guide you, Aquarius. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Three hours. And let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, hopefully that helped you, but you know, it's a general reading, so uh, just meditate on it. But really trust yourself, right? Uh, during this full moon. And. Uh, and trust your intuition. Trust what your emotions are, te are telling you. Where to go, right? 
right now, we have to, we've got to really start to depend, like rely on our intuition in our heart space. We can't go into the mind. Not now. No, 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 no. That's not a good place for you to be. The mind and the ego. And um, the other thing I want to say is I want to remind you about the readings, the 50% off readings. And they're really going to help you. There's a lot of valuable information um, in that one and a half hours. And we'll get you start to deconditioning, right? So they can really like fast track and become your authentic self because that's non-negotiable in the Aquarian age. So all the challenges that are coming are just showing you where you're not being authentic, where you're not being true to yourself, right? You have to be yourself. That's the only thing that will work in the Aquarian age. And these readings really help you. Like there's your compass, right? And I'm creating more recorded readings that are, it's going to be a huge project, but I'm really excited. Like I've, I'm working on one for myself. And those are going to be really, really good. I can, uh, I'm getting excited just putting it all together, right? Anyway, I'll talk more about that uh, later. Okay, so have a great full moon. And remember, it's all about feeling. So whatever's coming up, don't make it wrong. Just your job is just to feel it. I'm just, all I have to do is just feel this. And it will transmute. And then you're going from worm tongue, squeaking into the great awareness of who you are okay that's our way that's our way into the aquarian ages through the emotional body okay so i have to get my dog off to the park so have a great day or evening wherever you are in the world and i'll talk to you soon next video okay